Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. going to call the meeting to order. Um, and Mr. Carter, I think you have the honors. I believe I do. Thank you. Uh, join me in prayer. Father God, as, as we join in fellowship here and doing the work of the citizens of Alabama County, we seek wisdom, we seek knowledge to do the right thing, dear Lord, for our people. We represent them, we work for them, dear Father, and we, and we are so aware of that each day. And we thank you, dear Lord, for their presence, their support. We thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity to serve. We ask, dear Lord, that you bless the meditations of, the, of tonight that are before us. Bless those that have joined us here tonight and give them safety as they travel home after we're done. We ask all this, dear Lord, in the powerful and holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Don't in the place. <coughs> of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'm going to take a quick privilege. Uh, I just broke like two major ribs and, and uh, three three others, four, they say maybe. So if I don't get up and down and, and do all the pho photography and whatever, please forgive me in advance. <laughs> uh, but I'm just so glad to be back and able to uh, do the county's work. Okay. We have the agenda, and uh, Mr. Turner, I think you have a motion. I uh, just motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. Uh, ag agenda. We're not talking about consent. Correct. Yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all in favor, say, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, public comments. And looks like we have six people that have signed up. Uh, Michael Cole. Hey, gentlemen. Now, let me say before we start the clock, uh, everybody has three minutes. We try to hold everybody to that uh, to be fair to everyone. Uh, and if I cut you off, I'm going to apologize in advance. Uh, but we're going to try to get through this agenda. Thanks so much. Okay. Uh, I want to talk to you about the reevaluation. Um, I live in a little 1,600 square foot condominium. And my reevaluation, you raised the value of my home 82%. Uh, I started immediately the appeals process. I went through four appeals. Three of them were telephone appeals. The fourth one was an appeal right here in this room with five people sitting at the counter up here and four tax people sitting right here. And they heard me out. They were very agreeable to everything that I had to say. And when I got through, they said, we're not gonna lower the value of your condo. We're gonna leave it as it is because we think it's justified. Uh, I, we, I disagreed with them, but the, the chairman that was sitting there, he told me, he said, Mr. Cole, he said, uh, I have one good news for you. He said, your tax rate will be revenue neutral. He said, so you leave here with a good feeling. So, um, 
I said, well, I guess that's the best I can do and best I can expect for. So uh, then I read, and if my figures are wrong, I'm apologizing in advance, but the only newspaper we have now is the Alamance News. And I subscribe to it, and that's my source of information for what goes on in your meetings. And uh, all the writing that I was reading, it, it said that it was going to be, the, the tax rate was going to be revenue neutral. And then the school system comes up, they're $17 million short, uh, was a figure that I read. And Mr. Lashley here, uh, I'm re here, I'm quoting what I read, you push through uh, more money, more tax dollars to uh, take care of this short fund that the school system had and, and put it on the backs of us that living on a fixed income. I'm 77 years old. My income is Social Security. I'll let you deal, figure out what that is. And so I retire from the school system. I could spend the rest of this night up here telling you about the waste in the school system and the things that I've seen. They waste $17 million. Trust me, Bill, they waste $17 million. And I went all the way through school with your dad, and we were friends after school. And I know how tight he was with a dollar with the school system, and he agreed with me. And I, before my time runs out, I, what I'd like to have explained to me, here is my last year's tax bill from you from the county here is this year's tax bill it's it's a hundred and ninety two dollars more this year than it was last year and the last thing the chairman told me was as i was turning to leave from this dais he said mr cole your tax bill will be the same thing this year as it was last year i wish somebody would explain that to me i don't get it I, I was told, I followed the process, Mr. Chairman, I followed the process by the letter. I came in here and stood right here and was told to my face that my tax bill would be the same. $192 is not the same. We thank you. I have one question. Where you, where, where, what's your house? Where is it? I live in Burlington. There you go. The Burlington, just want to tell my commissioners, the Burlington City Council raised your taxes 22%. Well, I, yeah, I hadn't got to them right. yet. I'm, I'm coming I'm, here because the county raised my 27. I'm going to have to gavel my, my, this. My fault, my, uh, Mr. Yeah. Cole. I apologize. We are not allowed to respond to this public speakers at this point. Right. Uh, I will. We ask. are at the end of the meeting. We have uh, county commissioners' comments. Right. And Mr. Lashley can address that issue at the end of the meeting. But I apologize if we start this back and forth. I understand. I've never done this before, but I have been adamant well, I, about I'm this tax increase. I'm not fussing at you. I'm fussing yeah. at Bill Ashley. Yes, I <laughs> and, and he should. But I was looking for where you were, where your home residence was, and I didn't. I couldn't. Yeah. Oh, okay. This. Burlington. But I, I certainly will want to address your concerns at the end of the meeting, without a doubt. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Thanks, sir. Bro. We appreciate it. Okay. Oh, sorry, John. No problem. Uh, Burnett Brown, am I pronouncing that correctly? Not quite, but that's close enough. <laughs> correct, please correct me. It's Barrett Brown. I live 1560 Morgantown Road. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. C Ms. Chairman, other commissioners. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm going to speak uh, in a little, in slightly uh, different vein. I want to speak in terms of support for public school education. I have a resolution here. Uh, I think you've been forwarded it before. Do you have a copy of it? Do you have it? I have copies here if you. Sure. I tried to send it on. It's a. It's a resolution that is going around to county commissioners across the state. We're asking, and I'm also president of the Alamance branch of the NAACP. We're asking, and I'm speaking also um, in conjunction with the a uh, AVAE. Um, we are asking that the county commissioners support, uh, adopt a resolution to uh, remind the legislatures that it is a constitutional right in North Carolina to, for, to have access to a free public education. And having a constitutional right is imbued upon the legislature to fund that right. Um, they tell me that you don't tell people what you love, you show them your budget and they'll tell you what you love. And so if we love our children, then I ask you to support the, the funding of the education, the funding of uh, teachers at a, a living wage with an 18% increase in their salaries. Uh, we ask you to, that they, you consider that the, the um, public education 
is the largest investment that the state makes, the state legislature makes. And having other organizations that are not public school educations vying for those same funds is a, uh, is a distraction from the children who need those resources, who don't have an opportunity to go to private school, who don't have an opportunity to go to parochial school, who don't have an opportunity to uh, go to charter schools where the uh, where the they have to uh, they have different uh, categories for students that they take. In fact, uh, the public school education has to educate the child that shows up at the door, and so the argument can be made that their investment, uh, that our investment in public school education, it should be a priority. And I thank you for considering this resolution, and I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. And we thank you, uh, Mr. Vines. You never, been before the Board of Heavy. <laughs> Henry Vines is a regular. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Paisley. I'm glad to see you back on income, income uh, commission there, and I kept up with you, and uh, we, we, we've thought about you and give you our thoughts and prayers. Appreciate it. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to address, I, watched, I didn't come, but I watched the last meeting, the price of eggs and what it has to do with the economy. <laughs> um, I thought she's going to bring a chicken. Well, they might not let me in the door with a chicken. <laughs> but anyhow, you know, uh, it's it's the same thing, price and demand. Um, the reason eggs went so high was because the avian influenza was here. Uh, a lot of flocks were disposed of. Eggs got short, so the prices got high. Same thing in the housing industry, you know. When it's short, it's gonna it's gonna be higher. When it when the demand gets higher, then or the supply gets higher than demand, it's gonna go down, you know. And the prices will go down. But right now, the market is dictating, you know, what we have to do and setting values. As I said on the board of equalization, it's tough to you know uh, to do this. Um, the second thing I'd like to speak to you tonight is about the media, the media uh, median deal. I think that uh, Meridian, I'm sorry, um, uh, the option two where it stays the same, they sell it, operate it on the same contract as, that Mr. Coble has in place. I don't think that anyone would have any objection to that, but when you start increasing the mileage out to 100 miles and start bringing in other counties debris into our county to dispose of their problem I think is wrong uh, it's a good asset that we've got that we can use for our county and maybe even our surrounding counties you know we don't allow it you know outside county uh, people to come into our county landf landfill because we don't want to uh, fill our landfill up and shorten the life of it. So I hope tonight when y'all consider this that you will consider the option two of leaving everything the same if they want to operate this under under the conditions. And when you talk about the study that's been done, and I think if I read it correctly, it was between 25 and 30 loads they're saying because they're gonna increase the size of the trucks, well, the size of the trucks, tires up the roads even worse and as stated about 50 tons or so 60 tons or so going in there now uh, that's six eight trucks a day versus 30 trucks a day it's definitely going to be a big increase and a big impact on that neighborhood so I just ask you to please uh, leave it like it is and let them buy it and use it as it is thank you sir. Thank you, sir. Medora Burke School. And while you're approaching, my ink pen just ran out, so I'm pointing to my wife, asking her to give me one of the 17 ink pens she probably has in her purse. Can you bring your pen? You can have mine. I have one to give you. She's got one right there. It's in red. That's a teacher. That's okay. <laughs> Oh, it's worse than that. It's one of my campaign pins. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, good evening, commissioners. My name is Medora Burke School, uh, 3673 Mebane Rogers Road. I'm here tonight as the vice president of the Alamance Burlington Association of Educators and as the Education Committee Chair for the NAACP. Uh, I'm here to speak on the resolution that we sent you and that you have a copy of. There's a lot of whereas is in there and it's easy to lose the point of it. But the main point is we would like you, along with commissions from across the state of North Carolina, to light a fire under the General Assembly to pass a budget. Um, as you know, they pass a budget every two years that is responsible for funding the bulk of public education in North Carolina. In addition to lighting a fire, asking them to hurry up and pass that budget, because they're a month and a half, two months behind schedule on it, um, we would like to ask that a couple things be pointed out to them um, and maybe included in the budget. So currently we're 32nd in the nation for teacher pay, but we are 46th in the nation for beginning teacher pay. Uh, and it's really hard to attract new educators to my profession. I speak before classes. We have a club, the Future Teachers of America. We can barely get kids to join that club because nobody wants to be an educator because everyone's like, oh, you don't make any money. Oh, you have to have two jobs. Oh, you, you and it's, it's very hard to get kids to consider that as a career choice. Right now, North Carolina is graduating half of the education majors that we need to fill the vacancies in our schools. Uh, and that's, that's miserable. Um, the, uh, the other main point is uh, an expansion of early childhood education. Uh, right now, um, 80% of North Carolina, North Carolina families report a lack of childcare as being a major budget issue in their households. 87%, and it's rare that we all agree on something, but 87% of North Carolinians report an expansion of early childhood education as one of their priorities. Um, right now, the only way to get into pre-K in Alamance County, because I just went through this with my youngest, is your child needs to have a developmental delay, some reason that they think that they won't be able to thrive in kindergarten um, or you have to live below the poverty line. Thankfully my child dove under the table and refused to speak for 30 minutes so we got in. Uh, <laughs> I didn't train her to do that. Um, and the third thing is there in there, and this is probably the most odious uh, thing coming before the Senate and uh, the House, is a proposal to lift the cap on private, using the opportunity scholarship for uh, private education, right? Like right now there's an opportunity scholarship and it's income based. So only low income applicants can have an opportunity to use public dollars to go to a private institution, like a private school, which which I already have some pretty major issues with, right? Like, we should not be paying for public school money to fund private schools. But what's before the legislature right now is lifting the income cap, meaning you can make a million dollars and still apply for that scholarship to send your children to private school with public school dollars. So those are the things that are in the resolution. Those are the big take homes. Thank you for your time. We thank you. Barry Joyce. You know, piece of paper here. I'm not going to be able to read it tonight, but you give you something to read when you go to bed. <laughs> Are you saying it's going to make me go to sleep, Barry? No. <laughs> <laughs> it should really wake me. You might not be able to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Let me give you one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, the first thing I want to say before I get into this is the North, the state of North Carolina has no statutes that say that Alamance County has any obligation to give teacher supplements. Okay? Not, not, the taxpayers in Alamance County aren't, by law, required to give them. You are forcing the county taxpayers to pay for these supplements by voting them in. Okay? So, a couple of weeks back, there was an article in Alamance News about teacher supplements. The thing is, is they only put one column on there, the teacher supplements. Okay? They didn't put the principal supplements. They didn't put the assistant principal supplements. I don't know why, 
But if you look at this information I gave you, the, the, the complaint was that we were 23rd, uh, no, 22nd in the state in teacher supplements at an average of almost $6,000 a teacher. Well, that's not too bad, all right? Then we go over to principal supplements at $17,000 as, as a average. Then we go to assistant principals that are $10,000 averages, okay? So our assistant principals and our principals are in the top 10 in the state. But our teachers are 23rd, okay? I'd like an explanation for that. I don't think there is one. The, the scary thing is, is that this board right here put millions of dollars into the school system's budget for supplements and you don't even know what you put in. You can't tell me what the part of that budget went to supplements. You don't even know. You voted in millions of dollars of taxpayers' money and you don't even know how much you voted in. That's bad, that's terrible. You're talking about being a fiduciary responsible. You're talking about the finance guy losing $2 million. You'd be, in a little, you'd have to be upset. I'm upset that you don't know where millions of dollars is in supplement money. That's not very fiduciary responsible to the taxpayers in this county. Very, very bad. The next thing is, is you're calling this a teacher supplement. Well, let me give you a little idea, folks. This is not a teacher supplement, okay? In the central office, counting principals and assistant principals, which are administrative people, there are 90 of them. They get the highest paid supplements, not the teachers. There's only one group at the central office that doesn't get more than the teachers. That's a little group called coordinators, and there's five of them, okay? There's 15 directors. They start in 11%. This is, back, this is based on last year, okay? So the teachers start at 10 and a half, all right? The executive directors start at 12%. The chiefs of blank, that's three minutes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's 13%. And the direct the deputy superintendent is 16 percent. Hey Barry, you know I'm going to have to. I know, but <laughs> this is some awfully important information, and I spent a lot of time on it. But I'll come back next next time you have a meeting. But this is some information for you to look at. This is not a teacher supplement. This is a school supplement given mostly out in higher portions okay, to administration. I'm, I'm going to have to stop you. I okay. Apologize. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I assure you we will look at your materials as we will everybody's materials. Thank you. Thank you. Leonard Harrison. Good to see you again, sir. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Leonard Harrison. I'm running for Congress for a reason. The reason I'm running for Congress is I'm fed up with the narrative that's going throughout this country left and right by the left. And it is amazing to me that we find out in our own community, again and again, we're watching the left seep in and do everything, everything they can to undermine the kids in the community that we have. Our library, our main library, where our kids go to get their information, upfront and personal, they've decided that they're going to make sure that they change this community. White fragility. It's a state in which even a minimum amount of racial stress becomes intolerable, triggering a range of defensive moves. These behaviors in turn function to reinstate white racial equilibrium. We have that up on, right up in front and personal at our library. In addition, intersectionality is the lens through which we can see where power comes and collides, where it interlocks and intersections by Kim Crenshaw. Then we have racial equity in a racist society. It is not enough to be non-racist. We must be anti-racist. Well, the narrative that this is a racist country is absolutely incorrect. I have done everything I can in my life. I'm an individual who has served his country. I've served <coughs> side by side with African Americans, Filipinos, Hispanics, you name it, I've done it. In addition, I've rescued thousands of people, about 70% low-income African-Americans. I've given a kidney to an African-American, and I've raised children in our 
foster care system and adopted a child who was a person of color. I am fed up no matter what level this nation is, that we have a narrative going that we allow government agencies go unchecked and allow DEI to come in left and right and make sure that they can tell our children, this is not the place you want to be. This is a racist society that we're in. If they went down there and they put something that was racist in the other direction, if the KKK had their little board up, I would stand just as tall, just as loud, and just as furious. We have a great nation. We have more rights protected by our Constitution than any nation on the planet. And we have a board that's about to be put together at the library where they're going to appoint more people just like this to go in and question what kind of a country we're living in and make sure that they can push it in that direction. And I think that we need to stand up, stand tall, and say we actually stand for something and teach these kids what we actually have the opportunity to have every day. And it just absolutely infuriates me that it's even in question. Because yes, this country's made mistakes, but this is by far not a racist country. And we thank you. Next on our agenda is the consent agenda. Um, uh, Chairman. I do have a question about one of the items on the consent agenda. Uh, 5B is the one I'm concerned about. Not so much concerned, just have a few questions. Mm -hmm. Are you making a motion to yes, remove I make a motion that? Yes, I'm making a just pull it off the consent agenda and just speak about it, talk about it, and find out what it's, what it's all about. Let's place it on the regular agenda then. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll second that motion. Any discussion as to that one motion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. So 5B, we are putting on the regular agenda. Um, and because that's going to be very, very quick, Should be. why don't we just put it as item number one? Okay. And we'll proceed from there. Mr. Chairman, I have a similar motion. I'd like to um, discuss 5A, 5C, and 5E. That are on consent briefly. That's A, C, and E. Yes. Do we have a second? So, a uh, second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. So, we have moved A, B, C, and E to our regular agenda. As to the remainder of our consent agenda, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. We have a motion to approve the remainder of the consent agenda and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. We, all of you folks that are not in attendance but are in uh, Zoom land, that just got rid of part of our agenda. <laughs> That's a good thing. Okay. A is the fee update with the Public Health Department. Who's presenting that? I think I saw. Uh, we have yes, representation. Uh, Ms. Rosso from Environmental oh, Health yeah. is here this Becky evening. Becky Rosso is here. Uh, Tony's away this evening. He's uh, taking his kid back to college. Yeah. I spoke with him today. That's how I know this. He's on his way back. And these are some environmental health fees. So. Good to see you. Right person. Good evening, Chairman. Good evening. Good evening, Commissioners. So I am here. We have brought before you um, some fees, and it's an amendment to our environmental health fee schedule, and it is to incorporate North Carolina General Statute Session Law 2023-90. That is House Bill 628. So this um, is just a fee that will become effective September 1. It was passed July 10th, so it's quick, quick turnaround for it to be um, effective. Do you have any questions about the fees? Mr. Chairman, a couple of questions, if I might, just for my okay. clarification. I understand that these were caps for fees that citizens are charged when they get a permit from the Department of Health. Is that right? Correct. 
Um, and so these were passed by the General Assembly after we passed our budget, our, our budget that incorporated certain fees, right? Correct. And these three different uh, areas are, are capped at fees lower than that that we pass in our budget. Is that right? That's also correct. Due yep. to the um, the General Assembly passing cap. Yes. Okay. Correct. That was that was my only question. Any other questions? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Mm -hmm. Any opposed? Unanimous. Tell Tony you did an excellent job. <laughs> that was we'll that was very easy. <laughs> right? yeah. I it that way. And, and we're by the way a lot quicker than he would have been. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next will be five B one, which is now six whatever uh, budget amendment lottery fund. You want me to start? Yes. Who's, going to, who's presenting that? All right, you're first. <laughs> All right, so before you tonight, commissioners, is a budget amendment that would request the county to reduce its budget by $16,114.80, and that's due to the closeout of a state lottery project. When we are notified by Alamance Burlington School System staff that a lottery project is complete, the county has 60 days in which to file that application. So we have filed that application. It has been approved by the state, and this is just to reduce our budget. If we do not do that within a 60-day time frame as far as filing that report, then we receive audit findings. Very good explanation. Mr. Lashley. Uh, yes, the only thing that I was really concerned about, and I, I think I spoke with you about this as well, is um, I just have a basic question, and then once I can get an answer to this question, I have two more. Okay. Uh, which school board meeting was this approved by the uh, school board for this lottery fund request to be placed on the consent agenda? So do you know the, the, the I do not know that that date. Isn't it statutory required? Actually, according to the process that we receive from um, DPI, it's that one of the leading agencies, whether that be the school board or county commissioners, takes the lead in filing that closing um, application. And for the 18 years that I have been with the county, it has been the county's responsibility to file that. Um, so I'm not sure that we have ever really had seen school board um, approval before we are filing that with the state. Uh, we're just following the guidance that DPI has given us on closing out those projects. Sure. And that that's, uh, makes perfect sense. Uh, I think uh, it seems to be like a timing issue. That's correct. Uh, do we know what capital projects were completed? We do. So that capital project that was completed was, I believe, let me pull up the backup real quick. It was for um, replacing some exterior doors. Um, the project application went in as one project, but there were actually three schools in which that took place. Bear with me just one moment. I can sure. give you those locations. Take your time. That was at Graham Middle, Broadview, and Cummings. So there was a balance of the project at Graham Middle of $339.80, Broadview Middle, $3,600, and at Cummings, $12,175. Thank you very much. You're uh, welcome. Just make sure I have this. You, had, you just said a Broadview and Graham Middle mm -hmm. and Cummings. High That's correct. Okay. That's on the. Uh, Breakout in the agenda. Thank you. You're very welcome. And those funds, now that they have reverted back to the state, they are available to be reallocated to another pile of another project through the normal application process, which would be approved by the Board of Ed, coming to the Board of Commissioners for approval, and then filing with the state. I uh, don't want to throw you a curveball here, and I understand if you don't have these numbers in front of you. Can you tell me what the lottery fund account is once you put the 16k in it? I don't have that number with problem. me right now. I, 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 didn't, I didn't have that on my list of questions, but it just came to me. Uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept. All right. Also, I know that there are some school board uh, members here. Do you wish to be heard? You probably don't need to, but... No, sir. I don't think there's no, right. necessary. Thank you. I'll second the motion. <coughs> Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's again, unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, this is my, a comment, please. 
this brought to mind a, a, an item that uh, I was alerted to this afternoon. And I wonder, uh, seems like we found mold in two other schools, one of them being, I believe, was um, Cummings and the other one, Broadview. Is that correct? Newland and um, Andrews. Cummings at the two 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 and and Yes. Two more. Yeah. Yes. That was today. Yes. Andrews is finished. Yes. And so is yes. Newland. That's what I've been told. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move to item what was 5C, year end uh, designations. <laughs> That's the reason I was looking at it. <laughs> uh, commissioners, before you tonight, I am bringing a request for the county to designate $3,284, I'm sorry, $84,762.60. Um, this is part of our normal year end closeout. What this does is it will designate funds to be used during the fiscal year 23-24 budget. Um, I can take a few minutes and go line item by line item to give explanations of that. Um, if you'll recall, within our fiscal year 23-24 budget, it was voted on to use funds from the Capital Reserves Fund to offset our CIP projects. What this would actually do that I'm requesting is to designate $1,479,223 in the general fund. So instead of transferring those funds out to then transfer them right back into the general fund, we just designate it and then I can do a journal entry in fiscal year 23-24 to show the use of those funds. Um, within the next line item is a request to designate $150,407 for the ACC capital reserves. Those funds will be transferred at a later date to the Capital Reserve Fund for ACC. There was an expense recorded in the original calculation for operating expenses. Those expenses did not occur, so in keeping with the Davenport model, this will transfer those funds to their Capital Reserve Fund to be used for future capital projects. Um, a request is made to designate one million one hundred eighty-one dollar one. Wait, let me start up. <laughs> one million one hundred eighty-one thousand two hundred dollars um, for the DSS child welfare slash Cardinal. These are funds that we had originally received from Cardinal Innovations for the uh, prevention of kids coming into custody, reunification support, kinship, licensure expansion access to supports not covered by Medicaid and for interim supports between the placements and placement disruptions. Um, these funds will continue under VIA, um, but we are asking to designate those funds for DSS use. Uh, legal, we're asking to designate $224,475.88. That would be for any ongoing lawsuit settlements that we would need to have. We would have those funds in a designated fund and they could use those out as needed. So we're not saying that we would expend anything at this time. It's just having those funds available. And that's 424000 424000 It's a lot of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> so excuse me. I thought you said 224. <laughs> I'm sorry, 424. <laughs> I apologize. Um, I know that both of our county attorneys kind of cringed when you read that. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, we're asking to designate $38,022.52 for ongoing uh, maintenance CIP project. If I'm not mistaken, that's for a roof project that Buddy is working to finish up. And $3,734.11 for ongoing CIP projects at the parks. And then the last item that we're requesting to designate funds, $7,703.09 for a clerk of court for a jury system. That's going to be a software system that they are setting aside funds for. So, and so my understanding is that these were monies that were designated for last year's budget that we haven't fully spent. That's correct. But we ha but we still, we're still trying to spend them on the items that they were allotted to, and so we're just moving it to this year. That's correct. So that we can spend them the end this year. That's correct. Okay. Any other questions? A motion to approve. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 5D was pre previously approved on the uh, under the consent agenda. 5E, the minutes from the August 7, that, 2023. That's my request, Mr. Chairman. I just noticed that the minutes reflecting commissioner comments indicated that 
when we were talking about the airport, that the improvements to the airport runway and apron were connected with the economic development for the hangars space, and those are actually different improvements. I just didn't want to, to, to appear to state that, F, that federal money was being used for, for those improvements, and that's not the case. So I just, with that amendment, I would, uh, I would move to approve the bill. Second. Any further discussion? With that amendment, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Again, unanimous, and we appreciate the correction. Yes, very nice. Next item, and I'm just going straight down the uh, presentation of other business. So this would, would have been 6A. It is now 6E Library Committee appointments. We have a number of applications. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we're trying to pick the, the ones out of this and looking at these. We've got two reappointments, Paula Hedrick and Jessica Simmons. And I would like to recommend that in addition to her, we appoint Cheryl Sanford. To I'll the, second that third motion. Seat. Apologize. I'll second your motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? Just want to make sure we have the names correct here. Oh, Jessica Simmons, yes. Paula Hedricks, and Cheryl Sanford. Thank you. All in favor of these three nominations signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Again, unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> And I want to thank everybody that applied. There were a number of really well-qualified applicants, but we only had three openings. So I want to say thanks to everyone. Noah Snyder. <laughs> Mr. Snyder, would you please come forward? This young man, you're a 10th grader or you're a rising 11th grader? I'm a 10th grader currently. 10th grader. Uh, tell us about your school and, and this honor. Um, uh, I go to Hallbridge in Saxville Hall. Yeah. And how old are you? I'm 15. Excellent. Oh. Uh, got any more growth in him, he's going to get tall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking your height. <laughs> um, tell me more about what you're studying. Um, what do you like? So, um, recently I decided that I think I want to be a doctor. Nice. So, I'm trying to get better, like, educational-wise, I guess. Just all around. All around. And you're obviously in 4-H. Yeah. What activities are you involved in with 4-H? Um... I do a lot of different things. I am a part of the club team is Snapdragons. Um, and then I'm also part of the county council, um, which I was the vice president this year. And then, um, I recently did the, uh, uh, st I cooked steak for district and state, which uh, was an interesting and fun event to do. This gentleman will go to Raleigh this weekend, or this, uh, which day would the presentation be? Do you know? The conference begins Wednesday and concludes right. on Saturday. I'm not sure what day the youth delegation is But he, he will represent 4-H in Alamance County, all of Alamance County, as our representative. Quite an honor, and we thank you. Thank you. Anything else you would like to say? Um, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Live on a farm? No. He deserves a round of applause. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Sir, we will see you and hear from you again. I guarantee you, you've got a lot on the ball. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good luck this weekend. Can you take a photo with the board? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think he has to have a photo as part of his um, sure. qualifications mm. to be the delegate. May I, make a, <laughs> may I make a request? Uh, because of broken ribs, I really don't want to embarrass myself and go up and down. Can you come up with us? 
Just come around to the corner. You going to stand up, John? Yes, yeah. sir. Oh, we're going to put you right here in front of the county seat. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll slide in a little bit. We'll get a little closer going in, guys. Okay. I think I got separated from Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think Robbie wants some, too. You will likely be in the Times News later this week. Kansas School. Good to see you again. Good evening, Commissioners, and thank you for this opportunity for us to be here today to recognize um, a department within social services. So I am here tonight on behalf of Alamance County Child Support. Um, which of course is within social services and located in the human services building on Graham Hopedale Road. With me tonight, I have our program manager, Ms. LaPortia McCullough, our two supervisors from child support, Ms. Rebecca Hendry and Mr. Willie Smith. And so we are excited about August being Child Support Awareness. Commissioner Turner mentioned some of our events that we have completed over the last month. Um, and we just ask that you um, recognize this month as Child Support Awareness Month for August of 2023. Excuse me. Not only are we doing that, but we as the county commissioners are going to adopt a proclamation. Um, and I'm not sure how, we'll probably have you guys just stand here and we'll stand if that's all right. That uh, but the proclamation itself reads, Child Support Awareness Month is August, in this case, 2023. Would you like me to read it accurately? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> Whereas, children are entitled to financial support from their parents, and Alamance County continues to improve its efforts as child support collections and whereas Alamance County Child Support Services is dedicated to serving families and children and whereas in fiscal 22-23 over $10,005 million were collected in Alamance County providing support to children and whereas children do not receive adequate financial and emotional support from their parents that who do, who do not. Most parents do, but those that do not uh, provide financial and emotional support from their parents may experience greater difficulty in growing up uh, to become happy, mm -hmm. uh, healthy, and productive adults. And whereas many concerned and dedicated judges, attorneys, clerks of court, sheriff's personnel, child support professionals work to establish and enforce child support orders for LMS County's children, one of our most vital resources, and now, therefore, be it resolved that we, LMS County Board of Commissioners, do hereby recognize August 2023 as Child Support Awareness Month in LMS County, presented this the 21st day of August 2023. And we thank you. Thank you. Uh, I did years of support with uh, collections and all kinds of things as a private attorney. Your job is not easy, and we really appreciate what you're doing. Thank you. Okay. Can we? Here. If I can stand. Okay. That'll work. <laughs> you guys line up. 
And one of you pulled the proclamation in front of you. All right, before you do anything, we Lord, do, yeah. do we have a motion? <laughs> do we have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? More discussion? That is, you guys are superheroes. Thank you for everything you do for all in that sky and your dedication to this playoff. All in favor of this motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank goodness, no opposed. It's unanimous. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Robbie, would you guys take a picture, please? I'm going to take one for that. Thank you. Okay, thanks. One more. One more? <laughs> 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 I'm just going to eat all the Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank you. it. I have one more comment on this issue. Uh, I had a, my middle brother, I'm the oldest of three boys, um, was a child support enforcement officer in Orange County for many, many years. So I know that takes dedication. Okay, um, Dr. King, and it's so good to have you with us. We appreciate it. This is item number 6D, Public Safety Training Center, and Dr. Keene is the interim president of Alamance Community College, um, and we are so glad to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, members of the board, for receiving us today. I'm quite excited about being in Alamance County for a short period of time, and I see that you've already made a lot of progress on moving forward in so many different categories and doing so many different things. So thank you for your vision. Thank you for your commitment. And I look forward to sharing with you where we are on the Public Ser Service Training Center at this particular point. If you look at this first sl slide, you'll see that it takes many, many people, many organizations to make things happen appropriately in our county, and our state. And many of them are listed here, but there are really so many others that are involved as well. Two of my colleagues are here with me today. One, Mr. Tom Hartman, he does all the things to make sure that the buildings are built right and maintained. And then this lady uh, over next to him, I think all of you know, uh, Andrea Rollins, uh, she makes sure I, she keeps me on a straight and narrow when it comes to finance. And now, so, let me, let me interrupt you there. She is a traitor. You still <laughs> <laughs> well, good, good to have you back. It's good to see you, Adrian. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I'll have to admit, I am glad she was a traitor because my job would be much more difficult without her. <laughs> so thank you so much for sharing her with us. Yeah. I think uh, from my perspective, I'm so excited about what this Public Ser Service Training Center will do for Alamance County and really this entire region. And I'm talking about a multi-county region perhaps, and maybe even a state region perhaps. Uh, the potential is here. And you're looking at two primary things, one of them being the, um, the law enforcement community itself. And I think just right off the bat, uh, already, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll make this, is this kind of bragging a little bit, but we, it was announced this last week that we have the biggest VLET program in the state of North Carolina and all 58 community colleges. I'm really proud of our team for doing that. And we have a developing fire service uh, training. We, we do uh, well in that arena, but there's so much more that could be done. And so this is the beginning of this. You see just a, a quick uh, overview here uh, as a, an architect's uh, uh, insight. So we're looking at green level. We've met with the officials over at green level where this has been uh, conceptualized and visualized from the very beginning. And then one of the first things that we're going to do is create a classroom administration building. There are classrooms for fire training, classrooms for basic law enforcement, police officers, physical ability test and physical training area to be shared by both fire and uh, VLET. Uh, it is clear that I would not pass in any of those categories, but un but fortunately we have a lot of people, male and female, who go out and do this and do quite well. So making sure you have appropriate uh, facilities for this purpose is very important. The administrative uh, suite, storage, and so forth for the things that you have to do to carry on business. The emergency vehicles operator course driving pad is the first thing that you saw a while ago that came up on the screen. And uh, quite frankly, it was initially planned to be 400 by 400. There's potential for it to go 500 by 400, which gives you really an opportunity to do it in the right way. I've just spent uh, about uh, three years uh, developing one of these 
in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. And so I'm very pleased to see that you're taking the lead here in this part of the state as well. Uh, the enforcement fire and law enforcement training facilities will share a training tower, tower out at the uh, green level site. We call it a, glee, a green a green or a clean tower. Now what that really means is there's going to be fire in it uh, to where both sides can figure out what to do in those different emergency situations. But it's going to, if there is fire, then it's going to be on propane or natural gas, natural gas something of that nature. Won't be as dirty as what we'll call later the dirty tower. So um, at any rate, uh, an outdoor pavilion and then potentially an indoor firing range. I will tell you right now that those 12 50 yard, uh, you know, that firing lanes in an indoor firing range will set you apart from the rest of North Carolina. It will set you apart and make this an attractive area. Now, why is that important to us? You know, in, as a college, well, we get paid basically off the, uh, the things that we do to generate FTE. And so every student that we have, we earn a certain amount of FTE. And so the more of those students you have, the bigger your FTE to support your operations so you can continue to do a good job. So you'll see with some of the things that we've got here, this is where it's planned to be out at the green level site. Many of you know that it comes off the, uh, the realm of the Martin Marietta plant uh, that our aggregate area out there. I've been out there to look at that. Uh, you've got a nice operation out there, a nice opportunity to make great things happen in that part of the county. The uh, people at Green, Green Level, the mayor and the, uh, the others that were out there, the leaders uh, of uh, Green Level are excited about it. I think it can be something that will not only add to Alamance County proper, but significantly to the Green Level area and help you in another area in your county develop and grow to the degree that you might want to grow. So this is just a rough schematic. This is a sand, uh, <laughs> Sandy, what's that road? Sandy Cross. Sandy Cross. I knew if I worked on it enough, I'd get it. Sandy Cross Road with good entry in there and this plan will work uh, very, very effectively. I just uh, spent about $45 million on one of these things in Cumberland County before I left. So you've got a great plan here for the money you're putting into it, uh, and I think the opportunities you look forward to are quite good. That's where the, uh, the, one of the uh, training buildings will be, and uh, you know, coming into that particular facility, you'll see this is the classroom administration building. As you see up on the top uh, of this uh, graph, about 150 seats. And so both law enforcement and, and fire can be running simultaneously some significant training out there to get the work done that needs to be done as they replace people who are retiring from the profession, people who are leaving for other things, and people who are wanting to recertify in so many advanced areas of, of training as well. So it's not just the entry level, it's the advanced level that you're dealing with as well. About 150 seats in this place, and then that's not even counting what could be done out on the respective ranges that we're talking about. So you're talking about the potential of really bringing a lot of people into Alamance <coughs> County, and some of them are going to want to spend the night here like I do. Uh, by the way, I, I noticed that we're supposed to tell you where our, our, our uh, place of residence is. I live all over uh, Alamance <laughs> County. Uh, one day I'm in Mebane, one week I'm in Mebane, the next week I'm in Burlington, the next week I'm, uh, who knows, I might be on the side of the road somewhere, but uh, I'm telling you, you've got a great community that I've enjoyed so far. When we look at this, uh, this uh, 12 different sites, uh, 50 meters long, and something that can keep the, the rounds of those weapons can encapsulated and inside, it adds another element of safety to the training that these folks have to do. Uh, we are praying and we would ask for your support to our General Assembly members who are on board with us to make sure they've got it in the state budget. Of course, the budget isn't over until uh, completed until it's completed, but right now it's still in there. So we would encourage your support with our General Assembly members uh, in keeping that in the budget and then helping us uh, complete, really, uh, this wonderful, wonderful facility with that, with that training center itself. And so the indoor firing range, they can do things from shoot at 50 yards uh, to where they can do different scenarios moving forward or moving away from uh, individuals that may uh, be in exchanging some kind of gunfire. So it gives them a protected area in which they can do things extraordinarily well versed and, and safe in the way that they will do that. I've had the privilege of talking with Sheriff Johnson and others about this. He's excited about it and others. And I'm telling you, we're absolutely committed to it. Uh, so 
the overall schedule is this. I'm going to be a long gone and forgotten memory by the time it's finished. But what we're working really hard to do, and you'll see in 2023, is do all the initial work that we need to do uh, to put, pull this thing together. And we're trying to do everything within our power not to delay it by putting additional items in there that would delay us even further. So we're really pushing it hard. So we think that by uh, December, or certainly in January, we'd be able to complete the pre-GMP, the public bidding phase, the permitting, and then site work would begin sometime in January is what our plan is at this point. And then from that, things just continue to fall in place as we look at doing this. So, uh, you know, in terms of what the costs are, uh, I ask our folks to just Put it out there, all of it. Uh, and this is what it is. There's not a surprise in here. We'll have a final number in October as to what the final number is. And once that number comes in, that's a guaranteed number by the contractors and, and so forth. And so you'll see the classroom building, the fire training facilities, the site work on the EVOC tra tra uh, driving pad. That's a big pad, by the way. Uh, those things are expensive. And so, uh, but you're creating something there that is so different than what others in the state have. All the planning and all the construction fees, design fees, that's about $2 million, a million nine fifty right there. Water and sewer infrastructure is about a half a million dollars. Total project fund, uh, budget funding right now is $15,850,218. To the best of our knowledge and those that we're working with, in terms of the architects, in terms of the engineers, that's the best figure we can work with right now. I will tell you, when I was building the facility in, uh, in Fayetteville, I cannot, I, I never thought I'd say this to you, but we were having inflation rates sometimes from month to month of 28%, of 38%. One month it was almost 70%. Uh, about a year and a half, two years ago. So it was, it's just been crazy. So the prices have gotten uh, more expensive as time has, has gone on. The firing range is an alternative. That's the one we're asking you to support. In addition to the state uh, budget, uh, our federal partners, our federal legislators have uh, in our federal uh, budget that money as well. And quite frankly, if we were to get both, and I hope we do, uh, you could put another range in there and a different a series of of activities that our law enforcement personnel unfortunately have to encounter day in and day out, and I think it would be something you'd be really be proud of. One thing about it, with this facility right now, if you fund it, and as I know, I know you have, uh, but you continue to fund it and do the things that you're doing, you're going to have something that will set it apart from any other place, certainly in North Carolina, and uh, quite frankly, uh, counting many other colleges in the United States. Not many people have what you're, what you're building here. The Burlington site, I mentioned to you, I'm going to tell you about the Dirty Burn building. Uh, we can't really put this out there at the green level site because it would change the contract that we have right now, and that would throw us off another year and a half uh, in terms of a de delay, and then you deal with inflation again and all that kind of thing. We have felt like that's not the best thing to do. Um, this is a three-story, four-level live fire uh, training tower. They really put dirty, dirty fire in this one. I mean, it might be wood or it might be grass or it might be any number of things that they have to fight in multiple levels it has a, a class a burn building bedrooms burn rooms and so forth to where the fire uh, personnel can go in and out of different folks to include uh, when the fire is burning they go in and do the things that they do and we have trained people that do that quite well that is available through acc and everything that we do will run through ACC to make sure that we have the people uh, necessary to afford the program in the long term, which is what we look at. And uh, current uh, current status, we're underway with the discussion is underway with the city of Burlington. They've agreed at this point, uh, at least in conversations with them, uh, with me, uh, that they're going to do the infrastructure work, among other things, and we'd have to look at uh, how to afford this. This is, uh, uh, we think we have uh, monies uh, hopefully identified, Andrea, before she passes out over there. Uh, but if not, we may have to get some help on that. But these are containers that they've put together, well together, reinforce them. They're, they're very safe. They're used in a number of places, and they don't cost $14 million to put together like one I had uh, in, in, in Fayetteville. So it, uh, that will be a separate project from the Green Level site because it will not delay us in getting the green level site done. If we were to put this onto the green level site, first of all, there are issues with respect to water. Uh, Burlington is willing to come in and work with us on water and other things, so it's the best of all, uh, all elements. Not to mention, from an insurance perspective, the fire departments in Alamance County have got to be able to respond with certain numbers of people 
because if they don't, the insurance commission, the reinsurance rates go up dramatically and they may not be able to do it. So that's why it's wise to have some of these things in at least two different uh, locations throughout your county. That's a short, fast talking way of telling you congratulations on being visionary enough to come up with this and to think about this. You could do nothing else than, other than just open the law enforcement part of this and do what we've asked you to do here and support. And you would be surprised at the number of people that are already coming in uh, to this community and that will come into this community to get the benefits of what you're going to be providing. Uh, I, I've told uh, uh, my good friend over there, I'm, I'm afraid he'll throw a rock at me here in a minute, if I'd have known you had as many great people at this college as I've encountered, I would have been on a raid up here a number of years ago to try to <laughs> steal some of them from you because I'm telling you, the law enforcement folks are outstanding. And so the input that I've already received and quite frankly from uh, surrounding presidents are saying, what are you guys doing in Alamance County? I'd like to take credit for it, I cannot. Uh, Dr. Gatewood and our board of trustees and certainly our staff have done a remarkable job with all of you and your respective staff members and you are at a point now that it is really something special if we can just get over the finish line. So we're pushing as hard and as fast as we can trying to get this done. It'll be a vague memory. I hope to be invited back whenever you do the grand opening. I'd like to come back and see it, but the truth of the matter is you have something really special here and I wanted to give you an update on that. I'd respond to any questions you might have, Mr. Chair. I'd like to also acknowledge our sheriff is, is present. He is really encouraged and worked hard for this project, uh, and he is present in, in the audience. Uh, and also mentioned uh, Senator Gailey, uh, House Representatives Rydell and Ross, who have been extremely <coughs> supportive with this and many other projects and have helped fund and and again as you alluded to i talked to miss gailey this morning and they're hoping to pass the statewide budget yes, by the third uh week in september yes sir uh, and of course we don't have that luxury nor do you uh, we all <laughs> have to have it on us before july 1st but uh we appreciate what our legislative group our law enforcement our emts everyone has done to support this project. I think it's going to make a major difference not only to the county and we're not having to send everybody all over to Kalamazoo, for lack of a better <laughs> uh, to do training. We'll do it right here at home, save a ton of money, um, both in housing, um, you know, motel, all kinds of things, but we'll be teaching other communities. We thank you. Thank you, sir. I did have a couple of questions, if, if I might. Thank you, uh, Dr. Keene, for being yes, here. And I, I can't claim any credit for this vision that happened before I got here, but I'm certainly supportive of this effort. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's helpful, obviously, to ACC in increasing its offerings. It's helpful to our friends at Green Level for their economic development. Uh, it's helpful for law enforcement to, to getting a pipeline for additional uh, trainees as they come through that in all, all law enforcement areas. Um, Real quick, when you said that this program would increase FTEs, do, do you mean students? Student FTEs, yes, sir. And I really like you making that connection because I think what you're saying is that, that in making this investment, it makes this program attractive to more students. As you already had mentioned, that, that we have a very strong BLET program, and this should increase it. That's really important to me because not only is it going to increase the bottom line for ACC, but it also brings law enforcement those interested in law enforcement into our county, and as difficult it is to to keep law enforcement uh, to, to come to your to your particular organization, I think if, if more people come to the county, maybe they'll stay. And so I think that's um, that's an important point as well. Thank you so much, sir, for recognizing that. And I, as you were making your comments, I thought about something else. Uh, all communities, certainly counties and states, look for stability in terms of its populace and, and safety and security. And so that's what you're really investing in here. You're guaranteeing not only the present but in the future to create a system whereby you have those people coming in and staying and being uh, continue to, continuing to get training as time goes on so that your communities are much safer and much more secure even than they are today. And as people like me get older and age out and retire, 
Uh, I failed at retirement for three times, so this is probably going to be it uh, for me. But, but the point being is that you need people coming in to refill those pipelines and those those positions so that the safety of your communities are in fact guaranteed as the future uh, unwinds. That's the beauty of what you have here. People have an opportunity to come into your community, even from other places. See the beauty of what you have to offer here and the opportunities that you have. I think it's going to do great things for you, not only in law enforcement and in fire uh, rescue, but at the same time in other things in your county as well. Thank you. And then the last thing I just wanted to point out that I think we've got um, Ms. Rollins may be able to talk about this. We've got a uh, uh, the last tranche for for bond funding for ACC coming up in a, about eight weeks or so mm -hmm. that will fund the last the last portion of the available bond funds for ACC. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, that's yeah. September. October 31st. October 31st. October 31st. Yeah, okay. See, I, was, I actually remembered October. I was going to try to show off and tell you that, but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, she would have straightened me out if I'd have been wrong. But but the point being is that that's a very important date uh, because any the problem is any time we have any kind of a delay right now, it throws us off. And it's not just a matter of weeks or months. It could be years. That's part of the problem that I think we've already encountered to some degree. And you, you have a wonderful vision. You have a wonderful thing that you're looking at here to do in your county. And I think it's going to continue to even put you on the county more often than, than, than you already are. And you've got great things going. If you don't mind, I, I, I'd, I'd like to share just one quick thing, then I promise I'll be quiet. But it's to your points. Uh, I had one of my fellow presidents, and I met uh, uh, last week. And he came in and told me about this uh, this area, and, and would we be willing to help and work with him? And I said, of course. Uh, it's getting rec it's getting recognition, and it's getting support from other places because they want to come to a place of excellence, and a place of quality, and that's what you're planning here. That's what you're providing here. And any time that Sheriff Johnston and his colleagues can go out and have a renewed force coming into that to guarantee uh, the safety and security of your community. I think it's a great thing, and we're just delighted to be a part of it as a college. Mr. Chair, thank you. Wait, Members wait, of the wait, board, wait, thank can you. Can I ask a question? <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, the tower, that's not going to be located on site. Is that, did I misunderstand you? You'll actually have two towers. You'll okay. have one that is a multi-tower that is built of uh, presumably concrete mm -hmm. reinforced steel things like that but it and it'll burn fire but it's going to be probably gas oriented that kind of thing so it'll be we call it a clean tower okay. and so the law enforcement personnel the fire uh, personnel ems personnel they can go in and out of those facilities and do the things that they train to do the dirty one which is over at the Burlington uh, yeah. site, will be there and they'll burn as they do now, uh, the dirty stuff. So uh, they'll still use that. And they'll that still location. they'll still use it. So you'll have things like high angle trans uh, uh, high angle rescue, uh, where you come out of three or four stories high and you're trying to rescue rescue somebody from uh, either a, a manufacturing facility or, or a hotel or something like that, uh, and they they actually train on how to do that. And they take big boys like me, or, or a dummy like me, and, and I mean a real dummy. I mean one that weighs about 200 pounds, and they're they're carrying that that uh, dummy out of uh, that. Now that's not a human being, but uh, it is a it is a mannequin, yeah. I guess is what you'd call it. And they actually practice on these things. So what it allows you to do is not only maneuver through all the smoke and heat and so forth that they train to do in the fire uh, circumstance, but also anymore uh, with fire rescue, EMS, and all those folks, law enforcement. You know, sometimes they're the first on the scene, sometimes they're not, but it gives them an opportunity to do the work in concert with each other so that they're safe as well. So it's a, it's a far more complex uh, situation than it, it once was, but uh, this gives you the flexibility to do everything from the dirty fires. Uh, by the way, we're looking at getting an aircraft uh, over at the Burlington, Burlington facility where they can practice on, on aircraft, uh, you know, putting out fires and aircraft right. and rescue and all that as well so it's a it's a pretty uh pretty comprehensive uh, program that you've envisioned here and i think one that will set you apart well i know you said something that struck a nerve with me about um this training facility and how all these folks are going to want to come here to be part of such an excellent um facility which i agree but um i just hope that we can really recruit 
um, law officers. I know Bur City of Burlington did a good job with raising their pay for their city officers, mm -hmm. and now they're like got a solid staff, and we're short here in the county. And I saw in the news this morning that Austin, Texas is 800 officers short. Yeah. And some of their officers are having to come off patrol to answer the 911 calls. That's right. So, and that goes directly to their crime level as well. Mm -hmm. So I hope that we think about whenever we get this facility state of the art that we start paying our sheriff's department's state of the art salaries. Uh, I, I would agree. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a similar conversation today on a report that we've asked for uh, about the salaries of the uh, the people at uh, Alamance Community College. Mm -hmm. And so it's a similar issue wherever you go, and people are going to vote with their feet. And sometimes if they have other opportunities, they'll take them. But to your point, and I think it's a wonderful point, it's literally a situation to where we've got to be even more aggressive at our recruiting activity, mm -hmm. and we need to coordinate our activities with the sheriff's department, with the school systems, and so forth, uh, to do the things that, that there are a lot of people that still want to do this public service. And you've got a facility here now that will really give them an opportunity to come in and do the, do it the right way the first time. Well, and I think that'll help the recruiting efforts. Law enforcement's really took a hit everywhere you look at it. and. Um, they can't get there fast enough when people need them, but yet we can be real critical of them and thank God for them because they run to it. They don't run away from it. That's exactly and I was in a restaurant today and had one waiter for everybody because nobody showed up. Uh -huh. So that, um, you've seen that across everything. And uh, it cannot be in law enforcement or we're going to risk everything because it's all connected, schools, everything. I agree 100%. You couldn't, you couldn't be more right than what you just said. And that safety and security that we all rely on and count on as such that the only way we're going to do it is to stimulate the interest, imagination, and accessibility of people, uh, young and old, uh, that will come into that uh, that field. They don't do it for the money necessarily, but they've got to make a living for them and their families. And so the point being is that uh, we've got to be far more creative in helping with that as a college. Uh, the high schools, uh, we want, we're going to connect with them as well to do that both in fire and in uh, law enforcement. and. Quite frankly, there's a little place I used to live next to, well, still do, uh, called Fort Bragg. Got a lot of people that come out of that thing, and uh, they want to go into law enforcement. That's and they are we... the best part of a workforce that we can get our hands on. <clears throat> they are. They are. So, Mr. You. Chair, thank you. Uh, I appreciate it. Oh, that's the last question. Thank you for your, your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really yes. Dr. King, uh, I'm honored to serve on the Board of Trustees for the Community College as well, and I know that we have a program coming up which, uh, if you would, take just a moment to explain that, and then we'll do a photo op with the commissioner showing support for the community college. Um, and I also want to add that uh, part of my role there is to serve on the Building and Grounds Committee, and in that role I have learned that there is a tremendous amount of interest in this program already across the state to the degree that we already are having to look at the possibility of expanding this campus beyond where it is right now plan to be so i think that means more good, good news for green level more good news for uh alamance community college and alamance county in general now let me let me tell you a little bit about my mercenary uh, uh side and i do have one of those <laughs> uh, me too go ahead <laughs> our folks come first and so we'll be the ones who will schedule that and, and provide that training and that education. And so uh, it's, uh, you know, we're going to collaborate with everybody else. So uh, don't let me indicate for a moment that we're not that we're going to take second fiddle. Now we're going to work with and we'll collaborate. You'll find many people in those classes together as we find them now. Uh, but I'll tell you what, we're, we're pretty excited about what, what can happen for Alamance County and really the region because it's really a regional thing. I mean, in terms of something mm -hmm. that really goes south, I mean, you have people from all different uh, counties coming in to help in all different jurisdictions. And so you've got something special here. I really encourage you to continue to support it. Alamance Day, uh, that's uh, August 25th. That's this coming Friday. Mm -hmm. And it's celebrating. And I'll tell you, they've, they're sending things out today and, and have been for some time that people all over the world that uh, have gone to Alamance County or, or one of our supporters, uh, they're asking them to take a picture where they are. I'm going to have to take a picture, evidently, in my eye doctor's chair on Friday, <laughs> but I'm going to have one of those signs up there that they're going to put on social media. So uh, we would encourage you to support that with us and, and, and celebrate it with us. You have a gym here in Alamance Community College. 
just very quickly, our board meets tomorrow night uh, for the first uh, orientation. All the contracts have been written and signed and everything. A very aggressive pro uh, process in, in getting your next president. And they're planning, and I think they'll make it, on having your next president named and to the State Board of Community Colleges in December. So that you'll have a new president in January. So I would like to tell you something. My son's a pretty recent veteran, and he's um, going to ACC now in welding. And I didn't know how that transition is not easy. And I thought, you're going to school? What the heck? I've never had to buy school supplies. He went from high school to Army. It was really great. And he come in, and he said, you know, that place is really nice. It is not like what I thought, because I guess he was thinking high school. And he said, I've got the best you know, educators. He's, I mean, he's just really has fit right in. And I'm just real thankful because um, he, he will die if he knows I'm talking about him at this meeting. Oh, but I'm, you, you know, I just really appreciate that because I think all guys and girls coming out of the service, if they want to use that GI Bill, they couldn't have a better place to go use it. I would agree with you 100%. And I will tell you, uh, I, you think I'm joking when I said rating you? I'm not. If I were still president down there, you've got some great people here doing some great things. And if you've not been out to that advanced manufacturing facility for welding and all that now, mm -hmm. it is spectacular. It would surprise me if it, it's the best one I've seen. And I, I've worked in two different states that were pretty advanced in this stuff. It's the best one I've seen. Well, he's so. invested because he's already bought a truck with a boon. Is that that thing that goes up like that? <laughs> it's got all kinds of stuff on it. So Was he airborne? No, he was uh, Bradley's Army. That's okay. what she said. Army, Army, nothing but Army. There's no other branches but Army. As they say. Who <laughs> are? I'm well. kidding. They're all amazing. Ah, uh, they're all amazing. Even the Navy. <laughs> well, we, we, we even say that we'll take those Marines in every now and then. I think and they're and all the amazing. Bragg. God we bless them. We love them all. Mr. God Chair, thank you so much. Mr. Chair, make sure that you put a tail on his lip. If he starts looking at any of our personnel, just yeah. make an arrest. <laughs> I think he may have already been doing that. I'm not sure. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> we thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're going to get a picture here. And for the commissioners, I have already have my yard sign in my yard. But there's a sign sitting right over here in the corner for each one of you to put in your yard to show support for ACC this next week. Are we gonna hold this? Yes. You y'all stand down there and we'll stand up here. Thank you, sir. Very nice. Thank you so much. Bill Harrison, Dr. Bill Harrison. How is it? I was my um, You're looking great. And I was his board chair on the education. I love him. Him and Judy, they're amazing. Will, he's such an awesome lawyer. Good family. Please tell him how if you see him because he's in the alligators and golf. It was a big joke. See you later. Oh, yeah, those are mine. Thank you. <laughs> Please don't run off with us. Just be trapped here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I've been around for by years. at least two commissioners if we don't take a 10-minute break. So we're going to take a 10-minute break. We are back in session. It sounds like a great plan. Okay, Mr. Stevens. Good evening, board. We are here tonight to discuss um, a couple of things. Um, the first of which is going to be a request from Coble Sandrock to sell Coble Sandrock to Meridian Waste. And per the terms of the franchise um, that Coble currently has with the county, the county has to approve the sale. So that's one item for the board to consider. And then also a proposal from Meridian Waste to adopt a new franchise with the county and 
this is really not my item to present. Uh, it's just mine in so much as I help to draft the proposed ordinance and negotiate the contract. So we have folks on hand tonight from both Cobles and from Meridian, and I think we're going to hear from the folks with Cobles first. All right. Mr. Longus? Nice to see you here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Good evening, members of the board. I want to thank you for having us before you tonight. I also want to thank the county attorney, the county manager, and their staff for putting together what I think is a very good packet before you as to what the items are for your consideration. These are pretty complicated matters. And I thought that the board has a very good packet prepared by the county staff that's logical and it's very complete. And again, I want to congratulate them on a job well done. Let's talk a little bit about where we are and why we're here tonight. If you remember back in the early spring before March, we looked at the county's new franchise ordinance for solid waste, and it's a two-prong ordinance. The first prong was for you to make a decision, and you held a public hearing, and at the time, Meridian Waste presented its credentials, if you would, presented its expertise and experience before you, and the board, after the public hearing, voted to approve Meridian as a qualified franchisee for the county. Now that's not to mean it's exclusive. The other people can come in obviously under the county ordinance and apply, but you have that first step has been done by this board. The second step in March, if I remember correctly, <coughs> was undertaken where Meridian presented its terms and conditions for what it would like to see in the franchise agreement by your solid waste ordinance to permit Meridian to be the franchisee of the Coble Solid Waste Landfill. No action was taken at that time. So here we are tonight bringing up two points. And what I would like to suggest to you is that I think the first item of business before you should be the consideration of Meridian's waste application for a new franchise and the points that the county staff and Meridian staff have negotiated for this new franchise. Hopefully, I represent the Cobles, and for the record, my name is Frank Longest. I've been an attorney in Burlington for more than 50 years. My office is in Burlington, and I've known the Cobles for a number of years. Obviously, they're good people, good business people, good quality citizens, but they reached a point in their life where they would like not to have to spend time with the bulldozer and doing the gritty work of accepting solid waste trash and having to deal with the public as to what's acceptable and not acceptable. And so they would like to pass this gauntlet over to Meridian. Now, the Cobles have had a good business for a number of years and they've been approached by a number of people to buy this business, both big and small. And the Cobles have refrained from undertaking to do that and so Meridian knocked on the door. And they did their own due diligence to find out that the people from Meridian, like you determined, are good folks and are qualified and have their experience and expertise to run the landfill. They've been able to negotiate terms that we feel like is good for the Cobles and good for Meridian, and in essence, to be candid, good for Alamance County and its citizens. Now, if talking about the franchise terms, I will not go over all of those point by point, but you have seen those in your packet. The terms of the new franchise is basically for the life of the landfill, of course, subject to future expansion, subject to Meridian having to qualify and keep their franchise good standing with this county and with the state people as to the permitting. And to be blunt, the permitting is the toughest part of all 
because that changes from time to time as to what the circumstances are, what the requirements are, and to be real blunt, it gets real expensive to comply. The Cobles would love not to have to keep spending the amount of money that they spend on compliance because it is a diminishing return for them unless they decide to get larger mm -hmm. because they couldn't stay in the business with the regulatory requirements and expenses. That's what Meridian brings to the table. They have the ability to expand the current site, to put the money into that site for the expansion for the future, and they're going to offer you, and it's before you, the term natural life of the landfill subject to permitting, subject to the franchise. They have offered you a host fee of a dollar per ton. Now, how you calculate that obviously can be interpreted two different ways because, as I understand it, Meridian's requested that they be able to have a minimum tonnage to continue to operate the landfill. Now, the confusing thing that may be for all of us, me included, is that you talk with the state and the state's criteria is based upon a 365-day year. So when the state talks about tonnage, they're talking about every day. And they'll say, okay, you can have this amount of tonnage, but not everybody operates 365 days a year. Even Meridian's told you it plans on operating Monday through Friday and a half day on Saturday. So that means those days that they're operating, they're going to have to average more than the state would say the average per day is. So don't get confused on that. You've got to have that difference. You've got to show what the state says is the tonnage, and then you've got to have as a business model what Meridian's going to have to have to interpret that maximum tonnage on the number of days that they can operate. Monday through Friday and half day on Saturday. Now, my math is not the best in the world as I get older. My wife tells me my budgeting is terrible now. But if you take the number of tons that Meridian says that they have to have and you multiply that by a dollar a ton that the county would get, you're talking about $219,000 plus a year that Meridian would be paying to Alamance County if they maxed out at the amount of money that they're planning on trying to expand this landfill in the future. Now, they've also offered you a guarantee, so to speak, and not to indulge upon or take away from Meridian's presentation, but my memory is that in the next year, on a pro rata basis, they guarantee that they will pay under the franchise agreement with Alamance County $50,000. The next year it's $50,000 minimum. The next year it goes to 75,000 and then it escalates and then it hits the amount of 100 if I remember correctly, which would go on as long as the landfill works. That goes into the Alamance County budget, your coffers that you collect. And so that's an outside source of income to this <coughs> county that's derived from that solid waste landfill. Another benefit that I point out to you by having the Meridian operate the landfill is that that solid waste construction material is being provided as a service to Alamance County and the adjoining counties in the region and that keeps that type of debris out of your landfill and your landfill is a pretty expensive operation to operate. It doesn't make sense to put solid waste materials and debris in your landfill. It makes it stupid, to be honest with you, because it costs so much to operate and maintain your landfill and keep it from leaking and keeping it compliant with regulations that we're lucky in this county that we have a solid waste debris private landfill that can take away that burden from our Alamance County landfill. And so that's a benefit to you as commissioners. It's a benefit to us as the citizens of Alamance County. Now, I think we all know that progress is moving along in this area. Now, I'm talking about the area, I'm talking about Alamance County, I'm talking about Guilford County, I'm talking about Randolph. All of the ideas that are coming in with announcements of new industries, new jobs, all that 
requires more solid waste disposal and debris. It's got to go somewhere. We have the facility to do that. We can get the money from it at a dollar a ton. We can have that landfill operating which is profitable for the new Meridian people to expand it and keep it there as an asset. They can make money. Alamance County makes money. And we have a service to the community as a whole. It doesn't put debris into our expensive landfill. Now, let's talk a little bit about the traffic study. It's my understanding that you as commissioner didn't get the traffic study at the time of the last hearing for you to give consideration and review it and feel comfortable with that study. I'll let Meridian discuss that with you tonight. But my quick reading of the traffic study was that the traffic engineers in their analysis basically says that with the projections for 2003, 2000, to 2023, 2024, 2025, through 2026, there will be some increased traffic, but that increased traffic will not cause a need for improvements on Foster Road, that's Foster Store Road, or any of those other roads that come into Foster Story Road, the intersections of Greensboro Chapel Highway, and then also the Kimesville Road, that their projections are, even if there's an increase in truck traffic, that the improvements are not going to be required to handle that, that the load factor of the road is way tolerable to handle these additional loads. Now, <coughs> let's think a second. Now, Cobal, at the present time, gets a lot of its loads from smaller trucks. A number of those trucks will be decreased in number with long truck haulers. Now, Mr. Coble tells me that these long trailer trucks can handle 25 to 30 tons. So if you look at the amount of maximum coverage for tonnage that Meridian wants, you're only talking about 20 more trucks potentially over the week. Now, subtract that number in essence, the Cobal Sand Rock traffic will be reduced because Cobal's not going to be in the Sand Rock business anymore. So those trucks that currently go into the Sand Rock portion of this landfill will be taken away, and the traffic analysis took that into account when it made its studies and it made its recommendations to you. Now, the other thing I think is important is that Meridian has the financial wherewithal to keep this landfill going. It's going to take a lot of investment in the future to pay the expense of increased insurance, increased professional services, increased meeting of the combination of the state regulatory people. That's expensive, very expensive. And you talk about getting the engineers and the actual reports that are coming through we're not talking about a small amount of money. We're talking large sums. Now, I'd like to introduce Mary O'Brien with Meridian. You've met her before, but she and her team can submit to you what I call Meridian's case for you to consider and approve Meridian's franchise application before the board. Good evening, Chairman, fellow commissioners. Thanks for having me back. Um, maybe I have an electromagnetic field I was unaware of. <laughs> um, I'm so glad we actually had the public safety training presentation prior to this. Because what I think it represents for Alamance County is one of the many, many changes you all are going through. And that's a wonderful change that's coming to the county. And I understand it's really easy to love a public safety training facility. And it might be a little bit more difficult to love a landfill, but I'm going to try to explain to you tonight why I believe that the new proposed amended franchise is better for the county than the one that you have existing. 
So first of all, in regards to the change, we all know from previous meetings, we're looking at a new public safety center. We know we're, we know we're looking at new schools. Your housing counts and permits are up. You've built incredible economic, uh, commercial, commerce centers, both retail and industrial. All that creates construction and demolition debris. And I do want to clarify for the record that this is solely a construction and demolition debris landfill. It will not take any MSW solid waste. It is not our intention to try to repermit it as anything but a C and D construction and demolition debris landfill. And as you build those facilities, that waste increases. And the dis proper disposal of that C and D waste is not an option, it's a law. You have to dispose of it in a proper C and D landfill or your significantly more expensive MSW landfill. We see the Cobo landfill as a better option for the county for the management of that waste because it's not putting it on your half a million to seven hundred to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar an acre construction for one cell, one acre cell of your landfill. We have MSW landfills in other areas. We know how much it costs, the engineering, the compliance, the leachate collection systems. You don't want to be putting wood, plastic, sheetrock, metal back into an MSW line site. It if belongs- you slow down just a bit, I think we understand that, but I'm not sure that everybody- Maybe it's this that er everybody understands the difference between your, the Coble landfill, which is construction debris, versus our expensive Alamance County landfill. Would you go into a little more detail there? Sure, uh, and we do have our landfill engineer who could probably give you a better, more in depth, but simply, what I will say is your MSW landfill is your household waste. What you're putting in your garbage can at your home tonight's leftover dinner, your child's diapers, um, leftover pet food, whatever the case may be, that's MSW waste. Construction and demolition debris. And that's our landfill. That is the county's landfill, for. correct. And it's required to be lined yes, and it, very, very expensive. Yes, it has a much higher level of environmental compliance and construction and permitting costs associated with it due to the fact that the materials that go in it can have a stronger, more negative impact if they were to reach the groundwater. And that's why you have different levels of plastic and liners and different kinds of clays. Uh, this construction and demolition debris material, you're literally looking at it. That cloth material you're sitting on, that bench, that wall, that door, the plastic covering the lights, that's your construction demolition debris that goes into the Cobal site now and what we're proposing for Meridian Waste. Um, so as we look and embrace this change, we're asking you to consider a new franchise for the site. And the reasons we think this new franchise is better is first and foremost, the fact that the current franchise, while it may have a smaller geographic impact, of 25 miles from the site, it also allows for 25 customers that are named from anywhere to come into the site. That means that customer can be north of us, a state south of us. They could potentially contract with the largest solid waste company in the country that operates in all 50 states. That waste currently is permitted by the franchise as well as the state of North Carolina to come into the Cobles landfill. We have committed to the county through the new franchise, which we think is significantly much more protective to the county, that the waste that Meridian would bring in under our new franchise would only come from North Carolina counties. And from our original request, we have reduced it 40% to 26 named counties in the franchise agreement that you're looking at tonight. In addition, we believe that the guaranteed host fee payment, because is, is beneficial financially to the county. As um, our previous, the Cobles attorney mentioned earlier, it's a tiered effect because even though the current franchise and current, current permit allows for up to 600 tons per day, that doesn't happen overnight. It needs to be built. It takes time to build that business to win those customers. So that's why it's a tiered process, but we wanna make sure you know we're financially committed to the county and whether we bring in that level of waste per our 
earned franchise fee or the county's earned franchise fee, we're going to guarantee a minimum every year that we're in operations. We certainly believe that over time we're going to supersede the minimum of 100000 but we're going to be there for you so you can guarantee it, you can budget it, your citizens can count on it. Also, we think there's some really good things for the residents in addition to this extra financial impact. First of all, we would give all Alamance County residents who wish to do their own do-it-yourself projects, construction projects, landscaping projects, a discount on your disposal coming into that. You do need to show proof of residency. We don't want anyone else from a neighboring county um, benefiting on your behalf, but we would offer them a discount. We would also offer the county a discount on storm debris, if you have a hurricane, if you have an ice storm. That storm debris is allowed to come into our facility. We keep it out of your MSW expensive cells, and we would give you a discount based on your need to get rid of that volume quickly, safely, and in environmental compliance. We also guarantee that we would uh, increase the insurance on the facility. We maintain a $5 million insurance policy for environmental issues. And that is what we bring to the table, and it's significantly more than what is currently there. In addition, we would meet all state financial closure and post-closure assurances. We, would, we have guaranteed that we would be an active and committed corporate citizen by doing our special events. I come hot off the press uh, with an event that we did on Saturday at our Shotwell C&D landfill um, called our Summer Splash Bash. We hosted 617 guests. We fed over 560 hamburgers and hot dogs. And one of the most, I think, special things to me is that of that crowd, 225 people plus voluntarily took a hayride tour of our landfill facility. That's how interested they were in what we were doing and how amazed they were that we would invite the community to our facilities. They're, they're facilities that we're very proud of and we will do the same thing if we get the honor of owning and operating the Cobo landfill. Um, oh, and then also the, as part of our franchise agreement, we uh, have guaranteed that we would improve the landscaping on the road frontage and have litter control throughout our ownership of the site. And so as you consider this, you know, and you consider the change that's happening, we see these as benefits, things that aren't already there in the existing franchise. Can we operate under the existing franchise? Sure, we can operate under it, but we think this is a better business deal for the county to adopt the new franchise agreement. You get more for the change that's coming. You actually get a return for the change because no matter what, change is coming and additional tonnages are coming. It's permitted for 600 tons a day. It will come. We're asking you to do it with us. And I know that one of the biggest issues everyone is very concerned about is traffic. And we have our traffic engineer, we have our landfill engineer, and we're talking about a 52 truck a day difference, okay, between what's there now and what we're proposing if we max out the volume. Now originally our request for, was for 750 tons a day. We have backed that down. Uh, at the at taking in your comments and considerations to back to 600 tons per day. 52 additional trucks per day. When you look at the biggest employers in the county, Alamance County Schools is one of them, that's 26,000 teachers going to school on your roads every day. The Honda um, Power uh, Equipment Manufacturing Facility, that's 800 trucks going to, I mean, cars or trucks going to that one facility a day to work. We're talking about 52. Truly, it is minimalistic in the big scope of things. Um, but in addition, what I wanted to do is through the chair, um, I wanted to ask Dr. Samuel Powell to join us because we believe that there are some alternative ways in the future, they're not here today, that will greatly benefit access to the Cobol landfill as well as other large business entities in the state, or in the county. Thank you, Mary. Dr. Powell, well, good to see you again, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thanks, sir. Well, 
Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Sam Powell. I'm a resident here in the city of Burlington. And I come before you tonight uh, at the request of uh, the Mr. Chair. And uh, I wanted to talk about transportation here in Alamance County. Uh, and I'm doing this representing just my own opinion. I'm not here as a mem as a representative of any group, just making comments uh, that I would like to make as a citizen. And my background is that uh, I served on the city council for 12 years, from 1985 to 97. I served as a county commissioner from 98 to 2002. And for the last 20 years, I've been a member of the airport authority here in Alamance County for the Burlington Alamance Airport. And that brings me into the transportation issue because on our books, we have a southern bypass that's been planned now for 30 years. And it was put on hold for a number of reasons, but one of the big ones was that the airport was extending its runway. We went from 3,800 feet to 6,400 feet. So we increased the runway length. That, that uh, footprint of where that runway went was in the area where they were planning the bypass. So the, the folks you know, planning all of this wanted to see what the airport was gonna do uh, to then see what effect that would have on the, uh, the planned southern bypass. Well, last year, uh, the city of Graham voted that they did not want the bypass coming through their residential areas on the south side of Graham. So their city council voted to oppose the planned bypass. Uh, so back in November, in addition to that, the airport authority decided that we wanted to change the approach end of our airport, which in the past has been on the west, southwest side. Mm -hmm. So most of the traffic would come in from the Greensboro side and then land there at the airport. Uh, we use a uh, precision approach path indicator lighting system to bring those aircraft in. And that's fine for a small airport, but we're becoming more of a business airport now. So we're looking in the future to a more advanced lighting system that would give you a lower altitude or lower ceiling of, of the clouds when it's bad weather create a ceiling. And right now, uh, airplanes can come down to about 300 feet and Greensboro has 200 feet. So we would like to see that, the advantage of having that system plus the safety. Uh, and that lighting system extends out from the end of the runway about 2,400 feet. And right now the approach end of the runway would be over the village of Alamance. And you know that land falls way off. Those towers would be huge, plus Highway 62 comes across through there. So uh, the FAA does, would want to move Highway 62 out so it's not in the approach in, and that would be very expensive. So the airport authority voted to shift, and instead of coming in with our approach lighting on the southwest side, we would come in on the northeast side. So we'd flip that around. The land over there is not developed. It's not a way down. The towers would not have to be too tall. Uh, and we're doing our planning for the future of the airport right now. And we have suggested that we would have our approach on the northeast side. So, so what does that do? Well, if you look at the map there, there's a bow tie on there that uh, represents the airport and then the approach end on each the approach which would be on each end of that airport. And the one on the northeast side is the one that we would like to propose. 
and that crosses right over where the grand uh, where the southern bypass would be so again uh, the southern bypass as it's currently planned uh, is a problem so um, we would like to suggest that uh, and I'm not on the TAC uh, but I think at some point we need to do some some different planning to accommodate traffic we need a bypass to go around the city at some point in the future and we're not talking about next year but we could be 20 years down the road uh, so it doesn't impact the meridian project as much today but we're talking about future growth potential and transportation issues here in the county uh, if we could make the southern bypass extend down past the village of Alamance and then um, go across uh, and pick up 119 back up towards Mevin. It would allow for the Southern Bypass to be south of the Greater Alamance, which right now is very difficult for us to get transportation south of the Greater Alamance. And the Meridian Project also is in down there. The Meridian Project's about five miles south of the village of Alamance, the Cobo landfill. But I just wanted to, um, to bring this to your attention. Uh, those of you that represent us on the TAC, uh, I hope you'll take back, um, you know, maybe a plan to uh, take another look at our southern bypass, our transportation here in Alamance County. Uh, we possibly need better roads on the north side uh, as well, but for sure we need to do something on the south side. Uh, and, and so transportation issues are a big thing and, and we need to be taking a look at that. And if you have any questions, I'd be glad to. Well, this morning uh, I talked to um, Senator Gailey at length mm -hmm. about this issue. I see not only with Meridian, that Meridian is just a small portion of this transportation issue, mm -hmm. but Ms. Thompson, several have mentioned the increased uh, your traffic and so forth, and that is a major concern. If you're riding through Belmont and or of Alamance, you have massive um, potential traffic issues, um, and so I think the Southern Bypass is certainly a credible answer to resolve all those issues. That's not on our agenda for today, yes. but I really appreciate your bringing that to our attention. Senator Gailey um, is going to address it. Nothing will happen for the Southern Bypass in this current agenda. Uh, as far as the state is concerned, but now they're looking at it. And Mr. Archer, um, I think we're setting up a meeting uh, with him within the next few weeks and so forth with DOT and so forth. So we're trying to resolve some of the many issues which in part, in part will impact Cobalt and Meridian. Mm -hmm. And on this map, um, I have a dashed red line that goes north of the airport, another section is south of the airport, and and these are not on anybody's plans, okay? Right. So this is just me drawing out a possible uh, alignment for uh, if we have a southern bypass, it could go over the lake. There's plenty of different ways that it could be done, and I didn't want to confuse anybody this is just me drawing some dashed lines on a map. <laughs> so this, this is not coming from any official um, group. And but, we appreciate uh, it. But I think that um, it would give you an idea of what could be done. And you know, the city of Burlington put that sewer line all up and down the uh, greater oh, Alamance, right. and it serves the North Bank. That sewer line could also serve the South Bank. So we're, we put it in and we're serving only half of the area that it could be serving. So another reason to, to, do, to 
take a look at doing something. Any questions for Dr. Howard? Thank you. The last time I saw you, you was at the park and you was a soldier. Yes. <laughs> it was what a, an amazing day. All the history. It was just battleground. I was out there with Steve Van Pelt. It was just amazing. Well, thank you very much. I'm a member of the Sons of the American Revolution. That's a big deal. Enjoy. Uh, and He's a big deal. Chairman is too, but you know, I, I enjoy getting out mm -hmm. and we talk to different, all kinds of different groups. I think so. there was a rear admiral out there also. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. It was Jay just Blanche. awesome. Yeah. Very Real good. Real honor to be around. Well, thank them. you, Mr. Chairman. I, thank you. Thank I you. think, Sam, you actually presented this idea to me, what, about two years ago? Yeah. I've been talking about it. Oh, you've yeah. been talking about it a long time. A long time. And uh, I think we're, I think the time is now that we really need to start maybe uh, getting the state to take a look at it and, and our own engineers and people. And I think, you know, it's, it's been on the books a long time. And I think we could say that the old plan is pretty much dead. When you look at the, the growth in Chatham below us and the addition of Vinfast and Wolf Speed and you look at mm -hmm. Toyota, which is just 17, I think I said last at our last meeting, 17 miles down 62. I mean, it's you're there before you realize it. Um, if you look at the pathways to get to those locations, they're coming right through Belmont and Alamance, from Alamance County. And uh, having some way to get down there faster without creating congestion in those communities is going to be an important feature for us, I believe. And just um, as we grow, we have to deal with traffic right here in our own community. And, you know, we, we're laid out east to west, but we don't have as good a um, pattern for traffic north and south. And uh, if we don't do something, we get gridlocked. Um, and it's already getting pretty tough out there. Well, I happen to also serve on that TAC committee you're talking about. Yeah. And uh, I brought that up at our last meeting this uh, uh, last week. And it's not on their radar right now. No. So I suggest that's why we I'm, have that's why I'm here. presentation to them to talk about it as well. And they're, they're, uh, Mr. Archer mm -hmm. is uh, interested in hearing more about your ideas. So if they're waiting for a uh, response from the airport, we'd be glad to give them one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Powell. So this is just an example of how we believe that some of the situations and concerns that you may have can be answered. We think they can be answered through routing. And we think that a lot of the questions you may have in regards to traffic in particular, if you have any, can be answered by our traffic engineer or our um, Principal Engineer, if you have any. Please let me know. I will stand by. We're all ready to, to help clarify any questions you may have. Well, just think about the amount of construction debris that will be created if we were to decide to build a road like that if they work. Yeah. Does that conclude your presentation? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a few questions, and we may have to go around the room. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, first of all, on traffic, the traffic study that we have for March is—is is, is that not based on the assumption that the that the the daily amount is 750 tons? It is. Yeah, that was the, the decision to to start. My name is Dave Mills yeah. with WNA Engineering. Um, the the 750 was the initial amount. That's what the, the report is based on. Okay. Um, so the numbers that we were given earlier are based on the reduced, the 50, I think you said 52. It's the 50, so I think, I think in here it was like 63, 65, 65, mm -hmm. okay, 65. 65 a day. That goes down to 52 a day. And, Correct. And uh, there's a term in, in your study called LOSA, level of service. Correct. A, which is, I understand, a um, little or no delay. Correct. A little or a no delay standard, which is the lowest standard that you. But it's the highest standard. Well, the uh, service right, A is, is is like no restriction. Right. You're you're getting no um, delays in your trips where you know from different intersections. Okay. So uh, level level service D is usually where you want to start making improvements um, if if you get that low. Okay. So at 65 trips a day or trucks a day, there would be little or no delay. So that would be even less impactful with 52 trucks a day? Oh, correct. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, thank you. 
Hmm? Uh, and, and I think the next question is probably for uh, Mr. Stevens. Um, what I want to focus on is what Meridian can do right now as a matter of right. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if does, does Mr. Coble have the, uh, the ability to allow Meridian to run his facility under his current franchise? Yes, that's correct. Um, <clears throat> the current Coble franchise is silent on contracting of the operation. Merely says it'll be owned by Coble and operated as Coble Sandrock, but it doesn't say who has to actually do the operation. So there's no restriction in the present franchise for contracting out of all the services provided. Okay. And if, um, I want to focus on that, that, well, the current tonnage for the Coble franchise is 600 tons a day. Correct. Uh, based on that 365 average that Mr. Long has talked about. That is correct. This, the new plan would keep that amount. That's correct. All right. But as a matter of right, if Meridian were to just run Mr. Coble's operation, I want to focus on that, the 25 miles limit now, but then there's also a clause that would allow them 25, is it customers that they could, that they could allow at their own discretion and that could change at their own discretion, and we wouldn't have any say to control that, and, and that clause would allow them to contract with anybody, anywhere. Is that Yes, that's fair? my understanding as well, yes. Um, okay, So, and, and the, the plan that Meridian is asking for curtails, it gets away with that, tw it does away with that 25, but both the 25 miles and the 25 number of customers, and instead creates a geographical limitation uh, that is smaller than the ge geographical limitation that they brought before us last time. That's correct. Yeah, it does away with what we'll call the grandfathered list of customers. Um, and by the way, those customers can change at their discretion. So the number is 25, but the people on the list can change at any time. does away with that, does away with the 25-mile limitation and supplements, like you said, the geographic overlay. All right. Um, th there's a, Mr. Brian, there's a, there's a number on the fact sheet that you presented that the pollution liability insurance would be 500000 I think in the contract it's $5 million. Is that just? It's a typo. Yes. Which, I'm not which, used which to typing $5 million. Okay. <laughs> and the, there's a clause in the, what you're proposing that would allow for Alamance County residents who are non-commercial users to get a 90% reduction in the fee? No, it's a 10% reduction 10 in the fee. 10% reduction in the fee. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what is the fee? Uh, the fee is not yet set. We, we don't operate the landfill, so we don't know the true operating cost of the facility. Okay. It would be a posted fee um, at the entrance of the landfill. Okay. That's all my questions. Thank you. Mr. Clark. I'm good. Ms. Thompson. Mm -hmm. Let me just, all right, currently with the 25, and I'll use the word customer, I understand that's not the term. Um, they could go out of state, they could go anywhere if they wanted to, is that correct? That's my understanding. Under the yes. current contract. Correct. So, uh, but the Meridian contract reduces that to a geographic area. That's correct. And there's no limitation on the size of the customer either. So I don't know who those customers are, but one could potentially be the United States government. And if that were one of the customers, then that would certainly expand the geographic footprint. Then secondly, uh, we talked about insurance $5 million coverage. What is the coverage with Coble currently? Currently, we have a bond in place with Coble for 500000 for the same purpose. So a much, much smaller imprint. One-tenth, yes. Uh, what happens if Mr. Coble keeps the contract, if whatever, and he just shuts down? What happens to that current facility? Um, that's a great question. I, I think the franchise uh, agreement is silent as to that. There's no mention of what happens if he terminates operation. But I know the state has a scheme in place for winding down operations of a landfill. Uh, he might be able to better speak to what that looks like. So I know there is uh, a place for that regulation, but it's not in the county franchise. But I do know that the new Meridian contract 
addresses that issue. It does. How does that? How is it addressed? There's a, a scheme in place, again, through the state, and, and the insurance that they would maintain would be carried on through the life of the, the wind-down process. So we as a county would not eventually, potentially, be stuck with cleaning up a landfill? That's correct. I think correct, we would not get stuck. Yes, ma'am. Just to clarify what our franchise uh, agreement offers is in addition to the $5 million environmental liability protection that we would have as coverage over the site, we also would have closure financial assurance with the state, which is a bond, as well as post-closure financial assurance, which is a separate bond with the state. And what that means is that the state already has the guarantee of payment to close that landfill um, if we were just to vanish. Uh, and then also, all landfills have to be monitored after closure, and the post-closure bond, again, gives the state, if we were to vanish, the money to close that so the county would not be stuck with that liability. All right, if you take over the uh, current COBOL contract or if we approve this new Meridian contract, either way, you can have, and I, I like the COBOLs, I've known you guys forever, uh, but you'll have a lot more personnel to inspect product that's coming in to your landfill and just a lot more coverage. Is that correct? Yeah, what, what I will say to that is we will run it in compliance with every aspect of our permit. The permit is what's very, very valuable to us. And we operate other landfills within the state of North Carolina and other hauling operations. We cannot afford to get a bad name with North Carolina DEQ because, as you know, everything runs downhill and we want to make sure that we maintain the highest level of compliance at this site as well as at every other site, whether it's in North Carolina, Virginia, or other states in which we operate our facilities. So yes, we will have cameras on our scales. We will have uh, spotters on the landfill working face, making sure that we're only disposing of those materials that are authorized in a construction and demolition debris. And if there is something such as a tire um, something along that line that is not allowed a white goods that will get picked out, diverted from the waste stream, preferably sent back with whoever delivered it, but it would be handled appropriately. As you well know, currently with our current landfill, we're having to drill test wells all over. It's a terribly expensive process. Mm -hmm. So any just guesstimation at, at the extension of our current landfill that's so expensive in longevity if we do or don't approve your contract? Well, by diverting the waste from your landfill, if, if let's just say we were maxing out what the permit is for that facility right, right now, 219,000 tons a day. If it wasn't coming to us, and if it was going to the county MSW landfill, that rate of which you would fill up that cell would be significant. I don't have the exact calculations. I'm not sure if our engineer could do them real quick. 400,000 yards is, is that waste went to your line facility, you're going to chew up roughly 400,000 yards additional a year. Any guesstimation on cost savings to us as a county not filling up our current la line to landfill? And that may be a very unfair question. I'll do the best I can. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. My name is Michael Stubbs, registered professional engineer in about 10 or 12 states, including North Carolina. I serve as the president and principal engineer for Hodges, Harbin, Newberry, and Tribble. This is my 27th year in solid waste. So, order of magnitude, like uh, Ms. O'Brien said, your line landfill facility, without looking at the numbers, is costing you about 500 to three quarters of a million dollars per lined acre and another 250 to 300 thousand dollars on the cap system on top so you're just all in roughly a million bucks <coughs> an acre um, you can only put so many tons in that in that bowl right and so those 219 thousand tons we were just speaking of those 219 thousand tons are now being left available um, for municipal solid waste the stuff under all our sinks and the savings, it, it would be probably not in the best interest of the county to continue to put essentially an inert material. We're talking in construction demolition, we're talking wood, we're talking brick, we're talking concrete, we're talking dirt, we're talking sheetrock. 
to take that material that is generally inert by definition of construction demolition and placing it into a line facility that chews up the airspace when it doesn't need to is probably not good prudent fiscal practice. Plus, um, the behavior of construction demolition waste is such that it is bulky. It, it, it doesn't compress very well. Um, so you're going to get a density of significantly less volume of that construction demolition waste in your municipal solid waste line, landfill than you <coughs> are with municipal solid waste. So in the landfill business, all that you really own is that unit of volume and you want to put as many tons of volume in that unit, it makes prudent sense to not put materials in there that are one bulky and don't they don't need the liner system. These, these, these wastes are generally very inert by nature, hence the definition, hence the environmental protection. A construction demolition landfill per lined acre might cost $250,000 an acre on the bottom, $200,000 on top. So it's probably 50% more fiscally responsible to, to utilize a construction demolition landfill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And we thank you. Ms. Thompson, do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. Mr. Lashley. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just to point out a few discrepancies in your presentation. If I'm doing my math properly, 600 tons a day times 6 is 3,600 times 52. That's $187,000 a year max. I don't know who came with the 219. That's a that's a clever, but it's not it's not anywhere close. Now, there's a couple of things that you've left out mm -hmm. that is almost impossible for make a decision. How can I decide if your landfill is proper for Alamance County if you can't tell me how much you charge? Can Mr. Coble tell me how much he currently charges today? Because when I ask you that question is, is this particular material regardless of what I've been told tonight, does not help Alamance County at all. I don't know how it's prudent to take other people's garbage from 20 counties away and stick it in my county. Have you ever heard of the, the snow camp mine? This is what I'm trying to stay away from because the reason why this is not going to work for Alamance County is Alamance County is only going to get $187,000 a year for this. I appreciate the, the thought and I appreciate the dollar a ton but another thing that's being failed to be mentioned here is Mr. Coble said in a meeting in March that he only did 50 tons per day. Even with your calculations of 600, that's a, multi that's a, 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 that's a multiple of 12. So if your half a million dollars insurance policy that he currently has it doesn't even come close to bring it up to speed, the five million dollars is helpful. But I don't think that the $5 million is going to come close to cleaning up anything that should go wrong out there because I see things right now in my own school system that cost $2 million to clean a gymnasium. So I guess my question to you is, is unless you can tell me how much you charge per ton, there's no way I can tell and that the, this particular, um, because in our landfill, we couldn't bring any of this inner debris to my county and dump it in my landfill. You can't do that. That's not how we have it set up. Is that correct, gentlemen and ladies? Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. It's not. Please explain yourself. You've heard the discussion. Oh, my I heard your discussion, sir. That's why I'm uh, asking. I want to ask you. Why would you throw out a two hundred nineteen thousand dollar number when it nuts and come close? Well, I, I, just, I just walked you through the math, sir. Six hundred tons a day times six days is thirty six hundred multiplied by fifty two is one hundred eighty seven thousand two hundred dollars. It doesn't come close to two nineteen, oh, and I don't okay. know, understand why you think that that is going to make a difference in Alamance County taxpayers because we throw away a, a, that kind of money per day on our school system. So I'm just trying to put apples and apple apples and apples here. I mean I'm just going off all the things that you and your organization have told me. And the only thing I really want to get into this with you is if you cannot tell me how much you charge per ton, then how am I supposed to decide if it doesn't work for my landfill? Because I just got finished telling you, we're not going to 100 miles and bringing stuff and put it in our landfill. We don't do that. That would be stupid to use your words. That would be incredibly ignorant and not smart. Now, let's go back to your initial comments. 
This franchise is completely and totally different, based solely on the tonnage that's going to be increased and the radius that you're going to use. Now, my suggestion is, is if we were going to do this, it would be probably better off for our taxpayers if we put it in our landfill. Why? Because it's only going to be things that are in Alamance County, not 20 counties away, not to the Virginia border or the South Carolina border. That is not what we as a county should be doing. It's not a very smart way to go. Now, would you like to tell me how much it costs to close a landfill? Does anyone in your organization know how much it costs to landfill? I know that's your business, and I would think that you might know this. Yes, we do. How much does it cost to close a landfill? I invite my landfill engineer Thank to you. address that question. And we can address the question of the uh, calendar days. Sure. The state bases their, the life of the, the tonnage on a calendar year, which is 365 days sure. in a calendar year. Sure. That's how we arrive at 2 Well, I just use the times that you're going to be open. You, you can't take stuff in your landfill on Sundays, so I just decreased that day. And I know that you say you're only going to be open half day on Saturday, but I gave you credit for the whole day. That's how it came up with my numbers. Thank you. But again, the state bases it on 365 yes, days. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, so, Commissioner Lashley, the rough closure cost for construction demolition is is that the question yes, construction sir. demolition you know every site's a little different but for ballpark numbers let's just say in the hundred fifty thousand to two hundred thousand dollar range per lined acre i'm sorry per acre because the cnd is not per right. acre but order of magnitude okay and how many acres are we talking about oh the existing facility mr coble's about 75 acres or so, 80 acres. Maybe maybe 100 acres, I'm sorry, I don't have that number off the top of my head. All right. So roughly it's gonna cost $12.5 million to close this facility if it happens. <coughs> yes, sir, we have the ballpark, trust in that. Yes, you can Okay, I'm just, I would just, I had, had never heard how much it costs to close a landfill. Uh, that's and I should, if I might interject just yes, one sir. point um, those costs are required by the state regulation yes, to be updated annually by an engineer submitted to uh, North Carolina DQ who approves that estimate right. and then the client or the uh, Meridian in this case or Mr. Coble in this case has to demonstrate what's known as financial assurance in the industry to prove to the state of North Carolina that if you know, if it, as Mr. Brian said, if they just vanished, that, that financial assurance instrument is enough to close the facility, your $12 million, let's say, and there's another element of that, to maintain that facility in the closed position for at least 30 years of post, what we call post-closure care. So, sorry to oh, thank labor you. the point. No, 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 I thank you for elaborating. Let's do some math here. Um, can so Lashley, if I may. Yes, sir. Uh, I came up with the 219 figure. I'm not an engineer or an expert or a mathematician. Well, but someone what, in your organization used that same number. Well, so apparently you folks have been talking about it. Well, the figure I came up with and how I came up with it for yes, the sir. county is 365 days times 600 tons, mm -hmm. and you would get a dollar per ton. That's why I came out to two hundred nineteen thousand dollars about that you would max out that the county would get. Now it's not going to be that way right away. It takes right. time to build up, sure. and it's going to have to be an expansion of that present facility to reach that level. Mm -hmm. But hopefully, we're not talking about two years or three years. We're talking about a lifetime of a facility, and the county gets its tonnage fee based upon the volume that goes in there. Sure, at a dollar or a ton. Now, do you understand my questioning? Why? No, I don't understand how you got the math because my math figure is different from yours. Well, sir, I'll walk them through you. Not a problem. Well, I just three, gave you how I did math. Three hundred sixty-five day uh, a presentation is not true. Your organization is not open on Sunday, so you have to subtract fifty-two of those days, sir. That gives you three hundred thirteen possible days of work. Now, elaborate a little further. You're only going to be open a half a day on Saturday. Well, you're exactly correct at that approach. But the approach we have to use is a state approach. Okay. As I mentioned earlier in my discussion with you, everything's based upon the state on 365-day permit basis. That 600 tons doesn't have to come in every day. 
It could be 900 tons on a Monday, 900 tons on a Tuesday, 900 tons on a Wednesday, 900 tons on a Thursday, and still be in compliance with the state with the operating hours of, of five and a half days. Well, in your particular example you just used, that would be a whole lot more than 52 trucks, wouldn't you say? Not at uh, 25 to... increase the tonnage, you're going to have to increase the truck traffic. And then you're just telling me that 600 goes to 900, but yet you do it four days in a row. Wouldn't that be increased traffic on those four days that you chose? It would be increased traffic based upon the figures I'm told that a tractor trailer truck would carry 25 to 30 tons each one. Mm -hmm. So if you multiplied or divided the 600 tons per day uh, by the 30, you're only talking about 20 trucks a day. Uh -huh. And as you saw the figures they had, they were talking about 52. So nobody's trying to disguise anything. It could be a lot less than 52. Mm -hmm. And in your example, it could be more. No. On, on a particular Monday. Oh, night, on a, on a Monday or Tuesday, it could be if they were trying to get the state permit level correct. Understood. Okay. Understood. Mr. Actually, may I ask a question? Certainly. Mr. Loggins, if I, if I understood what I read correctly, or the way I interpret it, it's 600 tons a day, 365 days a year is the state allowance. That's the permit. Mm -hmm. Permitted. If you shorten the work week, then you can raise the average tons per day Correct. in the five and a half days you operate. So that raises the tonnage per day to a higher number mm -hmm. to achieve the $219,000. But the 219000 in theory is the maximum that right. the county the would get number. under the present permit. Right. I just walked you through the map. It's not 219. I don't care how you cut it. If you raise the average tonnage per day from 600 to meet the 600 tons a day, you take your you take your 600 tons a day, mm -hmm. divide it by the actual number, multiply that, and then divide it by the actual number of days, mm -hmm. and you raise your tonnage per day. Are you trying to raise your operating? So in essence, you're trying to you're telling me that there will be more than 600 more tons than a day. If, if you if you max in. it out, it'd be more than 600 tons a day. So now you're going to tell me that if I did 900 on Monday through Friday this week, and I did 900 Monday through Friday last week, you're going to close that you're going to close this thing down for the last four days or the last five be able days? Do that much because it raise it over 600 tons a day. Well, I'm just saying. So in essence, you're going to tell me you're going to say that if you actually do that 900 tons a day, it's his example, not mine. I'm just that, pointing out how they got the math. Well, what I'm saying is, is are you but with your math, you're telling me that that, that uh, landfill is going to be closed six days a week because they've got their max. And if they go on for months and months and months, are they going to close it for the last month because they'd they have to answer that the question. They possibly, the they possibly would have to. They possibly have to. But I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just tame this down until someone can tell me how much it, how much you currently get for per ton. I have no clue if a dollar is good or a dollar is bad. I'm just saying. I'm just don't have the determining factor for that. But I just don't understand why we as a board think this this is a new franchise agreement, no matter how you cut it. Because I know Mr. Coble has been permitted by the state for 600 tons a day, and Mr. Coble uh, owns that land. Uh, he has every right to, chick, uh, to, to pick and uh, choose who he wants to take, operate his landfill. That's his. That's that's, that's his. Right. Uh, that's that's his right because he's the owner of the property. I just don't think it's very smart to take other people's garbage and dump in my county because these other counties and I haven't even got to the compliance thing yet. No one here has told me what compliance is in place, so I don't know. So I know that something didn't come from Tennessee or the mountains and get dumped in your station, your waste station. I don't know what it's called, and then end up in my landfill. How would I be able to determine if that has been if that's been undertaken? How? There's there's no uh, there's no uh, markings on this track to tell me exactly where it came from. I'm sorry, we didn't include that, but um, we can speak to that. When a transfer trailer or truck comes, they are required to have a manifest of where that waste is delivered. Perfect. That is a signed, sealed, delivered document, um, and so we put our trust in what that manifest is. The hauler is responsible. If they lie, they're the ones who get in trouble with North Carolina DEQ. Is there a penalty for uh, this? If you were to find someone doing this, would you just say, hey, you no longer can bring your stuff, or would you actually 
would they actually be penalized for doing so? Well, considering it would be a violation of the franchise to bring in out of out of state waste, and again, it would not just out of state. I believe what you'll find is in the franchise it lists the 26 North Carolina counties of which we could potentially bring waste. Um, and again, construction and demolition debris, waste. At that point, we would not put our franchise or permit on the line uh, after we have paid a significant sum of money for it. Completely understand that. Absolutely. I'm good. Thank you. All right. Let me, uh, before you step down, Mr. O'Brien, uh, let me ask Mr. Stevens, our, our attorney, who helped draft this new contract along with your folks, uh, one, under the, if we do not pass this, do not approve it, which limits debris coming in to 26 counties only, nothing out of state. Uh, Mr. Colbert's contract allows him to bring in 25 customers. And I think one of your examples, Mr. Stevens, was if it was the federal government, we could be bringing in debris from any number of states. That's not correct. just so that would come tremendously and we and Mr. Colbo can allow Meridian to run his current contract. So we'd be bring in potentially debris from any number of states, not just the twenty six counties. If we don't approve this contract, we would not have the increased five million dollar coverage. Uh, I've read both contracts, and I read the one that was drawn by our previous attorney and Mr. Colwell sign. It's a terrible contract. It gives us, Alamance County, little or no protection. If you shut down the Colwell facility, you know, we're just holding an empty bag. And we, the county, Alamance County taxpayers, Henry Vines, you're going to be paying for that cleanup, whereas at least a five million dollars plus the other bonding and whatever with the Meridian new contract, you won't have to pay that. Uh, Mr. Paisley, have you thought about people who live in that community? Let's say that's take your take your example that something happens out there. Don't you think that uh, the county has libel for uh, people who live out there that say their life was impacted a adversely because of some mistake or some accident? Don't you well, think I don't think people, Meridian's going to allow. But they, the, what I'm saying is the residents would sue Meridian. They would debris. sue us. It's going to be inert uh, debris. I understand. It's not what we're spending millions of dollars for at our current Alamance County site. Well, what I'm saying, sir, is uh, just the opposite. Uh, how do you know? Because because what, they do inspections. If, if we were, if we were My gonna, dad was a tractor and trailer driver for years, and that's, that was his livelihood. And if you don't comply with the, um, what was the term you used? Manifest. Manifest. Uh, he's going to lose the driver. He's going to lose his license. The company is going to be in major noncompliance and penalties. That's how you know. That's why they have uh, potentially talking about the cameras and the inspections and the scales. Uh, you start bringing in what goes into our current Alamance County lined facility, and you put that out there, they, they're going to have massive issues. Well, I think that the people at our landfill would probably determine if they wanted this particular customer to come in to, to dump that inner matter in there. My question to you, sir, is this. How do you know? This is an opportunity. This is something that the county taxpayer should understand here. If we're going to take this stuff from 20 counties away, don't you think they should pay a premium to dump it in our landfill? A premium. Not just the way it's always been, a premium to take this, because we're doing them a favor. They're not doing us any favors here. Do you put a penalty on Honda Motor? If we're not talking about Honda, Mr. Paisley. We're talking about Meridian. We're now, talking about talk, any industry coming in this Well, country. Honda's already done their due diligence. I'm sure there was a traffic study when that one came out on 119. Sure. We're talking about Meridian. And I'm talking about the debris that they're going to dump in my county. I'm just saying is if they're going, if we're going to allow them to do that, they should pay a premium for because we're providing a service for them that they can't get no place else. They can't. So why are we actually making it so that we haven't? We we don't even know. 
Yeah. If they were to tell us how much they were charging per ton, do you want we to could answer sit that question? Let me finish. All right. If we were to do this, if they were to tell us how much they were going to charge per ton, we could do the math. And then we could also go to Richard, the man who runs our landfill, and ask him, how much would you charge if you had to take this from Alamance County? We're not talking about 100 miles away. How much would you charge? What kind of premium would you charge someone to bring this stuff into our landfill? Mr. Stevens, can we get into price fixing? <laughs> Um, no, well, I, I don't want to necessarily answer saying. that question. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that how do you know? Anyone in this room knows, tell me. How do you know unless you can find out how much you get charged per ton? How? Sir, I can answer. Um, they can. T they take any material and they of any category up to the worst kind to our line landfill, and they charge one price per ton. So... These kind of landfills are designed, should be cheaper mm -hmm. for the customer because it's cheaper for them to operate because yeah. it's an unlock. You know, all the extra steps that DEQ, we, a few months ago we talked about LCID landfills, which were even more inert, like stump, stump, dumps. Remember the stump, dump? Those tend to charge even less, mm -hmm. you know, and the market bears that out yeah. usually. So at our landfill, it's one price, and it goes in all the line. So if it's inert material, they're paying that, that premium price to put it in a line landfill. Just to give you some clarity on that particular subject, I wanted to make sure you got that. Thank you, Bruce. I, I do appreciate that. Thank you. And Mr. Lashley, as far as the tonnage per day, I just want to point out again that that limitation is, is 600 per day on average, even as set by the state of the current permit. So let's say we took Meridian out of this equation yes, sir. and the Cobles decided they wanted to operate at full capacity. They could do that. They could solicit customers from anywhere geographically outside that 25 mile range as long as they were on that grandfathered list. So we are presently in a place where that could happen overnight, even without an ownership Regardless. change. Yeah, so that, that's kind of the status quo at this point. And, and like we've kind of said before, 600 per day on average is the limiting factor in all of this. That, that is the overriding consideration that already exists as the status quo. It's just a matter of who's doing the operation. Right. And I completely understand that uh, Mr. Coble has all right to choose whoever he wants to operate his land. Right. And that's, that's the beauty of owning it. I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I have nothing else. Anybody? Yes, sir. Uh, Chair, I have one more question. Uh, Mr. Stevens, do you have the proposed franchise agreement handy? Could you turn to page five of that? I, I do, and I will. There's yeah. been some talk uh, here about about enforcement of the franchise agreement. Should it be should it be granted? Um, and there was an, a provision here, paragraph 18, material terms, that that I was happy to see, and I just thought it might be good to get your take on this, Mr. Stevens. It says. All terms and conditions of the ordinance, which is what we what we could approve, this agreement, meaning the proposed franchise agreement, and any and any amendment that may be enacted to either are considered material and failure to perform any of the conditions by a company is considered a breach of this agreement. Uh, and should the company fail to perform any of the terms and conditions, county has the right to immediately terminate the agreement. Can you just kind of give me a sense of what what you what your take is on that considering that all the terms of this agreement are material terms yeah good question and again we we drafted this jointly and that was one of the terms that we got no real pushback on um and like miss o'brien has said before they're concerned about their permit with the state but they're also concerned in, in my opinion about maintaining a relationship with us that's one of trust and faith um but as far as that goes it gives us the right to terminate the agreement and end their franchise which otherwise would be for the life of sight. Um, so we're not here negotiating these things on a regular basis, but having that clause in place gives us the assurance that we have the ability to come in and terminate the agreement if we know they're not living up to it. But also that they're not living up to any term of the agreement. Correct, yes. Uh, you know, sometimes if the, if the term of agree, if, if a term in the agreement, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little tired. If a term in the agreement is not material, then you wouldn't necessarily be able to terminate. You could sue for a breach and sue Correct. for damages. But the fact that every term is material means any breach of even a small term 
of this agreement means that we can terminate the agreement. Is that a fair assessment? That is correct, yes. And under the current COBOL contract, they're not limited to 25 miles. Is that correct? Given that they can have 25 customers from anywhere, any amount, any time. Yes, that's correct. So the term is 25 miles, but effectively, as long as there exists a grandfathered list of customers outside of that that's changeable without notice to us as to the change, then effectively there is no geographic limitation in my opinion. Um, I, is, excuse me, go ahead. Is this going to take away, if, if say they do their thing and this doesn't go to our landfill, is this going to take away the profits of our landfill because it's the one thing that actually makes a profit in this county? Um, I, I don't. I can't speak to that. But, I mean, I'm not sure exactly. But it sounds like it would. <clears throat> if they're not having all this to come in there, that would at least can't count that anymore. It's a difference, you know. Um, I, I think in theory that's true. That if anything that goes there is not going to go to our right. landfill. Um, that said, I'm not sure that's how we want to make the profit uh, on well, the lower. I, mean, I don't want to make profit on trash at all. Right. I mean. I went somewhere today where I saw things are just dissolved, um, and the, my goodness. But um, Pam, I don't, I don't know. Pam, I, um, uh, I, I've been working with Richard now for a long time here, so we're at record levels now, and we anticipate it continuing. And one of the things record levels at what trash? Yes, coming wow. already to the landfill. Um, and our goal always has been we're, we're one of the few counties with. A healthy landfill there's plenty of counties that would love love and spend tons of money to ship it here and we've been very restrictive on that which is again a benefit we have a lifetime on our landfill which is good and they're and they're they're literally digging that other cell right now I'm going to see it again tomorrow um, so I don't think you have to worry about the landfill paying for itself it's an enterprise fund all the money it gets goes back into that landfill that's what's very unique about an enterprise fund through the state so the mantra up until this point has always been prolong the life of the landfill for the benefit of alamance county citizens um, that we have a landfill um, if you have to if we don't have a landfill and you ship it somewhere else i've been in a county where it's like that the expenses are ridiculous yeah. or in New Hanover County where they had an incinerator it was 20 million dollars a year that was on on the taxpayers back for that so one of the things I saw when I got here was like wow you have a really healthy landfill with a long life so it's a benefit of Alamance County for the citizens but even Just, with that you're gonna you do run out of space in a, in a locked-in place so to speak and, absolutely and they have always been able to pay to expand themselves instead right. of it costing Absolutely. You have, they haven't had to dip into the taxpayer. It's been self-funded for a very long time and anticipating to be so. Yeah. Okay. Just, okay. just, just want to help out. Thank well, you. One thing to think about, too, like Bruce said, is that landfill space is not a perishable commodity. Um, as long as it exists to be filled, it'll be filled at some point. The flow of trash may ebb and flow, but it's never going to stop. Right. Um, so whether we fill that space now or whether we fill it next year over a longer period of time, it's going to be profit generated by the landfill at some point. Where do the tonnage fees go? Related to the Meridian right. proposal, they would go into the county's general fund. General fund, or would they go to the landfill fund? No, they're not. They're not restricted to the landfill. That's a separate enterprise. They would go into the county's general fund. Could they go to the landfill fund? Mm. Is there a reason why they couldn't? Just a question. No, well, it doesn't meet the definition of the enterprise, enterprise fund. fund, which is self-generating because they're generated by an outside entity. Uh, so, I guess we're trying to increase the longevity of our very 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 expensive lined landfill and i don't care what you say eventually it's going to get full and then what do we do well that would put yeah. my, my suggestion there was that would put more money into the landfill fund which would enable us to have more money growing to buy more land for the landfill as we have to operate so 
יש לו כוח. אוקיי, anything else from this board? Do we? Did we just buy? We just, didn't we just approve buying a couple acres for the landfill? It was adjacent. It's last week, last it's meeting? Separate. It was adjacent yeah. to the landfill. Some adjacent land to create a large buffer. Yeah. That's because we will eventually run out of lined landfill. Okay, I'm saying... Mr. Stevens, we have two issues, is that correct? That's correct. I, I need two votes from the board. The first is going to be on the county's agreement to allow the sale of Coble Landfill to Meridian, and I, I'll wait for the outcome of that. All right. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Well, with no second, we're done. Uh, I'll second it. Oh, I do have a second, sorry. Any further discussion? Just one question. Just step back, just whatever. If we had zoning in this county, we might, it, this might look differently, wouldn't it? Yes. Not today picking up zoning, but if we'd have had zoning. Um, I'm not sure in that the Cobra landfill. I mean, it's kind of a broad. I'm just talking about bringing something like this, like the rock quarry, like uh, like anything, you know, which requires a big discussion. This comes. Well, we have the kind of go, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I understand that, but I'm just um, I'm just saying, and I mean, I'm I'm going to say this, um, Meridian, you are as professional as they come. I don't have a doubt in you whatsoever. The Cobles, you just everybody in this whole situation is just of nothing but integrity, and everybody's doing the right thing. It's just how you feel personally of what your right thing is, and it concerns me that, you know, we could be sitting here with not really people of integrity that could come in and like a Mustang ranch. I mean, I mean, you never know. It's just awful. I mean, who wants that? But I'm telling you, when we don't have that kind of power as a county government, we're going to find ourselves in these kind of situations over and over again. And we're just very for Thomas, I'm a commissioner. Please let me finish. Um, but I just, I just want us to make sure that um, we don't keep finding ourselves in these situations because we're very lucky to have the people in this room that we're dealing with. That's the blessing in it all. It's just a personal decision on what each of us five want to agree to. So. Okay, Mr. Stevens, would you state the motion that has been presented and second? Uh, there is a second. Yes. Uh, so the motion on the floor is to allow and approve the the allowance of the sale of Coble's Sand Rock to Meridian North Carolina LLC, as is stipulated by the current franchise between the county and Coble's. All right, and that's totally separate than the later contract. Correct, yes. All right. All those in favor of the um, this sale signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. no. Did you vote? I voted aye. No. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it's 3 2 to approve. All right, then the second. Based on that vote, the second vote I need is for the approval of the ordinance that's in your packet, which would be the first of two readings and two votes on that ordinance to give a franchise and incorporating the agreement with Meridian to operate the current Copal site. And we would bring this back at your next meeting for its second read and second vote. But we still vote twice. Correct. Correct. Yes. Thank you. All right. Do we have a motion? I'll, I'll second. Any further discussion on this contract? Because I believe this contract is actually more restrictive than what Coble and Meridian have a right to do currently on support. And I just want to add that my decision has nothing to do with the folks at hand in this. I'm just going to side with the neighborhood and the traffic and the change to it. Uh, that That's it, that is it, that is it. I don't have any doubts in anybody in this room, it's just my personal opinion. I don't want that kind of 
influx of more stuff in that very small community. We've seen what's happened with the rock quarry, and I mean, it's just life. It's what happens. It's business. But that's that's just my personal opinion. I'm going to have to side with the neighbors. Any other comments? All in favor of the uh, Meridian contract, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. How did you vote? Aye. All right. So we have 3-2. It passes again. You're too quiet over there. <laughs> okay. So both pass, and it will be back on our agenda in two weeks for the second reading. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for everyone. Mr. Chairman, just as a point of understanding, we're talking about the Marine franchise coming up for a second reading, correct? The first motion you had carried does not require a second reading. That's, That's correct. correct. Yes. That is correct. Sure, but I understand yes. it's That's correct. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. County Attorney's Report. Nothing further from me. Thank you, Board. Thank you. County Manager. Nothing to report, sir. County Commissioners. I'll just start down the line, Ms. Thompson. I had a whole bunch, but to be honest with you, I'm not going to say anything. It's it's late and it's not on fire. Thank okay. you. Mr. Lashley. Well, I can understand your sentiments, Ms. Thompson, but after uh, the, our speakers tonight, I think it's imperative that I take some time here. Um, the gentleman, Michael Cole, who um, accused me of raising his taxes. I have to make some assumptions here because he's not here, and I don't blame him at all by leaving. <laughs> uh, he said his taxes went up by $192. Not disputing that at all. My question to him was, and maybe if he hears this, he'll call me and we can talk about this, but I would just be curious to see how much, but what his property was before and how much he, it was increased because if his property went up 80%, that just tells me that he got uh, his his uh, his wealth is 80 percent higher because of his of his reevaluation of his property. Now, to make an assessment on if that's a good number or a bad number, you'd have to take the the 192 and divide it into how much more equity he has in his home, just to make a fair comparison to see if it's quite right. There's also fire tax. I beg your pardon? Also, the fire taxes went up more yeah. than, yes. than a revenue yes. neutral. But that's why I asked him. I didn't know if his, mm -hmm. if his, um, if his house is in Burlington. He got a 22% <laughs> increase by the city Good. council of Burlington. Good. The Alamance County taxpayers, as far as their budget's concerned, I can let everybody in this room know because even with the debacle with the school system that night, we still were able to have our budget come in under the rate of inflation. Take 203 and a half divide, and minus 214 and a half, you get 10 million divided by 211. There's your increase that you had from inflation. So that budget, I can understand his, I can understand where, I, what, where he's coming from completely, but I just want to know that there's a lot of factors involved that make that budget less, the county is spending less money as because of, the, because of the rate of inflation than it did the previous year. Just wanted that to be thrown out there. Heard something tonight about some, um, I think the gentleman's name was Barrett Brown. Uh, I just wanted my commissioners to realize that there's some things that you did not hear from him tonight, and he won't say it. Because uh, Mr. Brown has a, 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 a situation and a, and a problem like most of people who come from his, his ideology. They have what they call, what I like to call, cultural dementia. That's the only way I can describe it. This group completely ignores the things and the failures that everyone can see in front of them. And then they make up successes that don't exist. And what I'm saying is, is that gentleman failed to tell you about charter schools. Charter schools are free to the public. There is just a different mechanism to get in those charter schools. You go through a lottery and you can sign up just like everybody else can. And for example, you got Clover Garden and you have River Mill. Clover Garden is going to have increased, uh, they already, they're, they're already, the charter schools have already started. They started two weeks ago. But uh, this particular um, gentleman who was talking about public education, 
uh, it, it just he just failed to see a lot of things that are right there in front of his face. And I suggest that Barrett Brown read the Stanford study. And anyone who hasn't read the Stanford study, I suggest you do. And if you do, you will actually see that charter schools are kicking the crap out of public schools. Why? Because public schools have a tendency to want to tell you what to think and not teach you how to think. They have, uh, and, and that don't that luxury is not given to charter school stu uh, teachers. Charter school teachers, they don't have any problems with pay. There's no, ex they don't have, like Mr. Um, um, <laughs> like we heard tonight, that um, we don't have, the charter schools don't have supplements. And they get along just fine. Have no issues whatsoever. So you have to ask yourself, why the difference? You have to ask yourself why the difference. Why does charter schools have this easy path? And I have talked to a bunch of charter school teachers, and they don't have the nonsense that goes on in our public schools. And I have phone calls after phone calls, and I just want to let Mr. Barrett Brown know that there are a thousand families in this county who want to get out of public education. They're not running away from public education because it's so daggum great. They're trying to get out of public education because they see that it does not provide the level of education they want their children to have. That is a fact, Jack. Everybody that I talk to want to pull their kids out of public education. That's the number one reason. I am sick, and I heard this from a lady today, I am sick and tired of the schools thinking that my kid belongs to them. That kid does not belong to them. And I'd be dead gum if I'm going to let my kid go to that school if that's the way they think about my kid. They look at it. And the reason why you're getting some of the comments that you did tonight from uh, a teacher, ABAE, well, I was told there was no union in the schools. But she, she tells me she's a representative of ABAE. Explain that to me. Now, I know she's just one person, but the fact of the matter is, is that's the, that's the road that she chose to go down. Um, I just wanted to, uh, to just make those comments about our teachers, and I, there was a gentleman tonight uh, who said he was running for Congress. And I want to find out exactly what's going on in that library he was speaking about. Some of the things that he was talking about in that library should not be in that library or any other library. So I would really like for someone to show me how this is being changed. And I am certainly hope that the folks that we put on that library committee tonight will step up and try to change this nonsense because this does not make our community stronger. And I don't know if anyone's heard that gentleman who, um, who became an overnight sensation because he released a song, Oliver Anthony, from Farmville, Virginia, one of the greatest patriots this country's ever seen, who actually told everyone, has a song about the, the, the plight of our country. And he hit it out of the park. And that's the reason why that uh, he actually speaks about things that we actually see going on in our own community. And that library fiasco is one of them. That should not happen. That should not be the place that we have currently in our in our county. And I, I apologize for taking the time, but thank you so much for listening. Mr. Turner. Uh, nothing for me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Carter. I have to uh, concur with what, uh, some of what Mr. Lashley had to say pertaining to the um, comments on the impact on some of our citizens of the uh, reval. I mean, we all struggled with that, um, and I think the hardest part for me is looking at it uh, from the perspective of an increase in wealth, yes. Part of the problem we have right now is you get an increase in wealth, where are you going to use it? Yep. If you sell it, what are you going to buy? Everything else has gone up too. We've had so many people make comments to the effect of, well, you, you raised it at the highest point, <coughs> folks real estate bank is going up even more and they're projected to go up even further so um, I think I made a comment at the last meeting we've got two houses in our neighborhood right now under contract at asking price that went under contract before they were even the signs even went up um, I mean it's 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 nuts but that's the reality we live in right now um, we're required to do what we did. We had a little bit of choice over the timing, but we had to pull the trigger at one point. If we pulled the trigger a lot further ahead, then we understood what the impact was going to be. But still, um, 
if you came in over 76% increase in your property tax or in your market value, you were probably going to see an increase no matter what we set the tax rate at unless we put it below revenue neutral. We came in like 1.7%, I believe it was, over revenue neutral. That sound about right? Close. Close. Not quite that high, to be honest with you. Yeah. About 1.7% over revenue neutral. And uh, it, we struggled to get there. As Bill said earlier, um, inflation was a lot higher than that 1.7%. Uh, and everything you touch and everything we touch has gone up. You heard tonight about the project for the community college. I have been in the middle of working with them on that for almost a year and a half now. We, we have shuddered every time we got a number. Because every piece of that pro those projects, all those projects, have been going up. As you probably remember, we had to vote to move a million dollars out of two satellite facilities to put back into the facilities we were trying to get done. Uh, and that's just one piece of it. Um, there's not anybody out there working that doesn't try to get more money for what their labor involves. And uh, we're facing that in every single department. Every single department. I mean, the sheriff himself talking to us again tonight about his shortages in staffing. And it's not just Alamance County. It's other counties as well, in law enforcement. But we're struggling to try and match what the neighboring agencies are doing so we can retain the people we have and try to fill in the holes we have in our staffing. So if anybody thinks it's easy to try and make these decisions or feels like it's something that we don't care about and doesn't affect us, they're, they're blind. It does. Um, I just want to add something to that. I know I skipped, but I'm just going to say this. Um, when I've gotten emails and you've gotten emails, and there are certain parts of this county that people are already barely making it, and their taxes went sure. up. And they just, when we hear of women who've, women, single women who are widows who've sold their house and moved here to downsize and now they're not sure on their fixed income if they can afford their downsize it, it just it's just it's just so wrong it just is and I, I know all the building and i know all the every time i turn around there's another piece of dirt that's got something built on it and it's just um so much but i'm going to say this i have voted for my last incentive for anybody that comes to this county. Because if I'm gonna give them a break before I give the citizens in this county a break, I'm just not gonna do it. I don't care, and I know that's the game, because that's the problem. There's always a game. And the people who pay the taxes pay for everything. And there's so many who don't pay squat. And that's what really hurts, because there's no balance in this. And I think the taxpayer is fed up with that. I work with the worst folks that struggle with stuff all the time with drug addiction and crime and it's just constant drain constant and it affects families it dissolves families it does everything our kids our juvenile crime everything is off the chart but i'm not going to sit here and watch mr cole come up here and talk about how much his taxes went up but i know you guys we we did as hard as we could with as much as we could and it's just heartbreaking there are things i wanted to fund that we could have said forget it but i don't want the county dealing with sexual assault and domestic violence i sure don't want this team having to do a hold the hand of a rape kid at a victim at armc because nonprofits do the real grunt work in this community and we need them because we don't we don't do that but we can't keep raising taxes on folks who can't have their taxes raised because they're barely making it now you know i don't live in a giant house i don't have a giant income you know, Craig just retired, so all the whatever he made is gone. It's just what we get for retirement and Social Security. So my, our lives have changed, and it's been a big hit for us. But, you know, as a county commissioner, you know, I had an appeal scheduled. We got an appeal time, and I didn't take it. How dare I come in here and want a deal whenever I s voted for the tax rate? So it's kind of like um, I'll run for office, but I won't run for hypocrite of the year. 
<laughs> so um, I'm just, you know, I'm, a, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking to me. And yes, I am getting emotional because if I'm not emotional, I'm going to be pissed. And you don't want to see me pissed because I think our counties took a big hit. People, I look at how people have to donate, 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 backpacks, all this stuff. I go, who the crap buys school supplies anymore? Does anybody buy their own school supplies? You know, what's going on? It's just, it's just it's, we are a hot mess, and it's not going to get better. And I, I, just, I just hate this. I hate this. I really hate this. Well, the only problem with not voting for him soon. I don't care. You can't tell me nothing. I'm not going to do speak, it. I know, but I respect you, Steve. We're in the same Sunday school classroom, and we got to really <laughs> behave to each other. Our pastor will take us outside. But I'm, I mean what I say, and I know that's the game, but I mean what I say. The average household, and this was a 2009 study, the average, excuse me, average tax dollar paid by a residential property owner in Alamance County was offset by their consumption of a dollar and forty cents in county services. I understand. Which means they weren't covering their own costs. I understand. The place we make up for that is in industry growth in the county. If we continue to grow thirty subdivisions plus like we are right now, and it's all residential and all the apartments that are going up in the communities. If we continue that kind of growth and we don't support it with industrial growth, then we're going to face a higher tax rate for our citizens instead of a lower tax rate for our citizens. I understand that, but I'm saying what I'm saying, I mean it. I'll have my little poster out front. I'm, okay, I mean guys, it. I'm the only one not to have spoken. Well, I'm now. sorry, John. We just actually <laughs> weren't through talking. I, I'm going I'm to make a motion that we adjourn. Second. I appreciate All that. Favor, uh, 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 Heaven uh, forbid I finish a conversation for you. Now. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.tv tvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.